Well, Rob Edwards has called for the Kenny to be rocking tonight, and he has got exactly that. Kenilworth Road needs to feel like the San Siro, like the Marrakan R, like Anfield, all wrapped into one tonight. It may not have the same size and scale, but it can certainly replicate all of the noise, all of the emotion, all of the romance. And to these Hatters fans, they wouldn't swap the Kenny for anything else. Just to let you know, there has been a goal. Dion Charles has put Bolton in front over on TalkSport 2. Bolton at leading at Barnsley. Remember, it's the first leg of the League One playoff semi-final, so a long way to go, but the best possible start for Ian Ebert's side. Well, here tonight at Kenilworth Road, they're going to end, hold up their end of the bargain, their agreement with the manager, but they need their starting 11 to stand up and be counted. Grab a massive three points that could see them join tonight's visitors, Everton, in the Premier League next season. Huge game. Your commentary team, live and exclusive on TalkSport, is the Chelsea FA Cup winner, Scott Minto, and our very own Joe Shannon. Thanks, Hugh. Good evening, everyone. 16 days to go as the Premier League season comes down to the wire and the start of three games for Luton to save their season. The recent slump has left them in the bottom three, but it's testament to their efforts over the course of their first ever season in the Premier League era that a remarkable escape is still possible. And they'll move above Nottingham Forest and out of the relegation zone at least for 24 hours or so if they win tonight. That Everton safety has been confirmed already, despite their point seduction, makes Sean Dyche's work look even more impressive. April was a great month for Everton. Only Arsenal and Manchester City won more points. Kaminsky is the Luton goalkeeper. Burke, Mengi and Osho are the centre-halves. On Yadinma and Doughty the wing-backs. Lekonga and Barkley sitting in midfield. Chong in support of Adebayo and Morris. For Everton, Pickford is in goal. Godfrey, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young. Harrison, Garner, Gay and McNeil. With Ducore in support of the returning Dominic Calvert-Lewin. The benches, two goalkeepers for Luton, Shea and Krull. Berry, Woodrow, Mpanzu, Clark, Hashioka, Townsend and Johnson. And for Everton, Jean Virginia the goalkeeper. Keane, Onana, Danjuma, Beto, Andre Gomez, Coleman, Chomiti and Dobbin. Well, Kenilworth Road may be one of the smallest venues in the Premier League, but it's certainly one of the most atmospheric, so full of character, and still, even now, 35 games into the Premier League season, Scott Minto, it's remarkable that they're here at all, let alone competing to still stay in the division. It's just an amazing story, what Luton Town has been through over the last decade or so. And to get into the Premier League was just an unbelievable achievement. But to be still be here fighting with three games to go. They're at home. They're up against a side that's now already safe. Not worried about that. How are their mentality going to be? The Everton players for Luton. I wouldn't say quite yet it's all or nothing, but we're getting there. So Everton are safe. And we know Sheffield United are already going down. Two from three will join them. Burnley second bottom. Luton know that a win tonight would take them out of the drop zone above Nottingham Forest, at least until tomorrow. We've got the playoffs starting tonight. The thrilling climax of the championship season tomorrow. And as fate are decided from the top and the bottom of the Premier League, it's now or never. And the only place to be is Talk Sport. It's been a wet and chilly evening so far. The floodlights are on at Kenilworth Road. And Luton get us off and underway in a game that really they feel they have to win. Morris is midway inside the Everton half straight away. Luton in the orange shirts, dark blue shorts and orange socks. Morris with a layoff towards the far side and Fred Ognadinma on the overlap. But too much on the pass from Luton's number nine, their captain. And it's out of play for a goal kick to Everton, who are in an all-grey away kit tonight, playing from left to right towards the oak end of the ground which houses the travelling fans and actually one of the first things that Everton did and there were boos from the Luton supporters was they won the toss of the coins at kickoff, and they turned the teams around so Luton are attacking the Kenilworth Road end in the first half as Pickford hammers the ball high downfield the Everton goalkeeper from, a, from the goal kick Everton who are mathematically safe they cannot be relegated even despite their 10 point deduction our commentary position is right on the top of the touchline here, right in front of Tahit Chong, who bursts into the penalty area, to pulls it back towards the penalty spot, Norris, cut out by Tarkovsky of Everton. Now Chong again, left wing position, 
Big steep drop down to the touchline below from where we're standing. Halfway inside the half, but Luton are attacking here. Neil nil the score, but Luton made a fast start. Chomp from the dead ball line. Another good cross, headed away by Ducore. Comes out to Burke on the volley. That's a thunderous strike, blocked by Ducore. And the Luton fans out of their seats all around the stadium. Just 90 seconds in, but their intentions are very much clear live on Talk Sport. Brilliant start from Luton. Brilliant atmosphere as well. Really very much on the front foot. And Everton look like they're still metaphorically enjoying themselves and celebrating from being safe. But maybe I'm doing them a little bit of a disservice. Maybe I'm doing Luton a disservice. Really positive start. As I say, the crowd is matching it. Scott Minto is with us for commentary tonight. Former Chelsea and West Ham United defender. And Jordan Pickford all in purple. Short sleeve shirts will take the goal kick. And he drives the ball high into Luton territory. Up goes Calvert-Lewin. Wins the flick on against Gabe Osho. The loose ball is broken for McNeil. Midway inside Luton territory. His ball out to the far side of the field. The old main stand side and Ashley Young. A former Watford player gets the boost from the Luton fans. And now Tarkovsky is fouled by Elijah Adebayo. And that's an Everton free kick on the halfway line. Well, Everton just need to try and get hold of the board at the moment. Not been able to do that. And very much it's been all Luton so far. And just uh, Even if you have to win a foul, and just try and calm things down a little bit. Because it has been all Luton in this first minute or so. You can see Sean Dyche. And Rob Edwards in the tiny technical areas just in front of this Bobbers stand that was built as part of Luton's promotion to the Premier League. This their first season in the top flight since 91-92. A point would take them level with Forest, but it wouldn't be enough to get them out of the bottom three. They'd be behind on goal difference. As Adebayo heads clear from the free kick pumped long by Pickford from the halfway line. Everton regained possession all in grey. Young is just outside the centre circle. Sprays the ball out wide to the far side, the left, and Garner. Everton retained possession. More boots for Ashley Young, who steers it backwards to the feet of Jordan Pickford. What a terrific month April was for Everton, especially, of course, at newly crowned Fortress Goodison Park. The home victories that they've secured against Forest and Brentford and Liverpool, of course, in the Merseyside derby, key to them securing survival for another season. And you have to credit, as much as so much is spoken about Rob Edwards, and rightly so, Sean Dyche has done a tremendous job this season at Everton as Godfrey concedes a throw deep inside his own half. He's done a brilliant job. I mean, even take away the points deductions at the start of the season. Many were saying that Everton would be down there, and they were. They've been down there for the last couple of seasons. And this is Everton Football Club we're talking about. Chuck in the, the points deduction on top. He went 13 games without a win up until that, that fantastic run in April as well. And of course, not only did they make themselves safe but on the way to doing that we made sure that Liverpool couldn't win the title well Luton are on a poor run at the moment only one win in their last 14 that was here against Bournemouth in early April Osho the left of the three centre halves has the ball now Doughty right in front of the near side touchline high floated pass up the inside left channel and Chong was beaten to it was he by Pickford who made a challenge Chong then went to ground Tarkovsky was hoping that his goalkeeper would come out and get it there was a bit of a miscommunication between goalkeeper and defender which is unusual for Everton certainly of late given their recent defensive record and then Chong went down as though caught by Pickford how much contact was the Scott Minter? No, not having that at all no contact Contact. I mean, he did really well to get in between Tarkovsky and Pickford. I think Pickford should have come out quicker, but once he realised he wasn't quite going to get there, he did really well just to pull his body and his hands away from Chong, who was expecting the contact, went down, not a penalty. And it's a great atmosphere here. Five minutes in at this ramshackle but lovable old ground, Kenilworth Road. They'll miss it when it's gone. Penned in by rows of terraced housing. Every single stand looks very distinct and very different. Plenty of age and character around this stadium, and it's very tight and compact. And the best thing about it is that the crowd are close to the pitch, so you really get a sense of the noise if you're a player on the field of play. Here's Fred Onyadinma, formerly of Wickham Wanderers, driving over the halfway line and winning a throw off Ashley Young. Far side the Luton right, Onyadinma making just his third start as a Premier League player. I'll tell you what, that's going to be a really good battle, isn't it? Onyadinma up against Ashley Young. We know that Young has been an incredible player in his time, but just struggled of late. Not obviously a natural fullback either. Nani Dima perhaps has been put in because of his pace. Luton nil, Everton nil, as a high ball from Burke goes out of play just in front of us. I wonder, Scott Minto, whether you're going to get to make a clearing header tonight. We're that close to the pitch <laughs> that it's possible. 
I don't know, Hugh might come across me, put his arm across and just do a diving <laughs> header as well. We'll we see. We are close, aren't we? Oh, it's great. Barnsley nil, Bolton 1, it remains in the uh, League One playoff semi-final. First leg at Oakwood. Commentary live on TalkSport 2 right now. Make sure you download our app. You can swipe between the stations at your leisure. That'll be particularly important across the course of this weekend. As another high raking ball from Pickford is cannon downfield up towards Calvert Lewin, the header cleared by Ted and Mengi of Luton Town. And here's Carlton Morris, the number nine, just shy of halfway. Ten goals for the season for Morris, and really crucial for Luton that Adebayo is back in the team from the start. He came off the bench at Wolves last weekend, finally able to start for the first time since February. Good footwork from Chong to dart away from Godfrey. Harrison then slid in well, effectively enough to win it back for Everton. And Harrison has got the ball on the near side touchline. Chong heads after him and blocks him off. And that has Rob Edwards, who's only a few feet away from us, applauding on this near side touchline. Goalless on Talk Sport. We've had just over seven minutes. No, they're up for this, Luton, aren't they? There may be pressure on them to try and win this game. And you do feel they really have to win this game if they are to stay up. But they're not showing any pressure at the moment. They're really getting stuck into tackles and looking direct and you're right to mention Adebayo as well being fit he got seven goals in nine before his injury I think it's been a big blow for him to be out that long I think he is Premier League class but uh, can he keep Luton Town in the Premier League if he can spur them on to a win tonight they'll go out of the relegation zone at least until tomorrow when Nottingham Forest play Sheffield United at Bramall Lane that is our Talk Sport 2 commentary at three o'clock before that, we'll have the final day of the championship season and all its thrills and spills at both ends on TalkSport 2. Ipswich against Huddersfield is our base. A point for Ipswich guarantees them promotion to the Premier League for the first time in over 20 years. And there are relegation encounters to be sorted out as well. We'll have uh, a commentary team at Birmingham City against Norwich City. Birmingham in danger of relegation tomorrow but so are a whole host of other teams here is Chong darting over the halfway line for Luton he's racing up the middle he looks really fleet footed early on here Chong he's tripped by Ghana and the referee's going to produce the yellow card for Ghana first bad tackle in the game and it's a yellow card for the Everton man and a free kick to Luton midway inside opposition territory you can already see how effectively Tahi Chong the former Manchester United player is breaking between the lines yeah he looks really direct doesn't he really pacey and he gets in front of Ghana there. And, and, and do you know what? It, if it had come from the side, it would have been a foul, but no yellow card. But he's come from behind, pushed him over, stopped an attack. It is a yellow card. Arsenal be, be Bournemouth at 12.30 tomorrow on Talk Sport. Arsenal with the chance to go four points clear, though Manchester City would have two games in hand. Barkley, right of centre with a Luton free kick, floated into the box. Morris pinning away at the back post. He heads it back across Hill, although that said, it really drifted away from goal, the header in the end. And Chong has to backpedal to retrieve possession. And Alfie Doughty will roll it back to the Luton goalkeeper, all in green, Kaminsky. Kaminsky's flighted ball, trying to find with precision Adebayo, but it was a simple header clear, thundered over the halfway line by Tarkovsky. Luton win it back with Doughty, who's been a good source of assists. He's a very dangerous player going forward in the Premier League this season. A robust challenge from Godfrey sliding in. The ball hammers into the advertising hoarding, and Luton keep the tempo high, just under 10 minutes played. Luton nil, Everton nil, and perhaps understandably, giving Everton a safe, and it feels in many quarters like a must-win game for Luton, a point from safety. Luton have made the better start. Oh, absolutely. And you would expect that completely. As I say, it's been a wonderful month of April for, for Everton. They are safe. And there's no doubt about it. I mean, people say, well, you know, do you really want to be playing against a side that is safe? We've got, you know, really sort of, OK, their, their heads might be on the beach, but actually they can try things and there, there's no real pressure. I still think I'd rather play against a team like that than a team who's got something in it. And there's no doubt about it, Luton have made the better start. A forward ball by Burke, high on the diagonal towards the right-hand side. And Anya Dinma causing problems for the very experienced Ashley Young, who'll hook it over his shoulder and away to safety. Now Lekonga, though, for Luton. Crossfield ball with his right foot, good covering work by Harrison tracking back and is able to cushion the header into the gloves of the goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford. You have to say that Everton's survival owes much to their defensive efforts. And indeed, it's three clean sheets on the spin. And four from five for Everton if you go further back. The 6-0 loss at Chelsea was very much an aberration as Calvert-Lewin goes to ground, turns towards the referee, arms outstretched, expecting a free kick, but it isn't forthcoming. 
and Alfie Doughty will take the throw from the left wing back position for Luton nil nil it's incredible to think of that 6-0 isn't it at Stamford Bridge yes <laughs> it just... sticks out because it was a bizarre result really for Everton given how good they've been defensively of absolutely and, and again I think it shows the character of the side and the character of the manager how they've bounced back since that game as well well more booze for Ashley Young on the far side of the field he's as I say the crowd are right on top of you every single stand at Luton so we hope to hear what the spectators are saying to him or shouting at him on the far side the former Watford man of course Watford are Luton's biggest rivals Mengi now for Luton midway inside his own half a square ball to Osha very positive start for Luton they go away to West Ham after this game and then they're at home to Fulham on the final day of the season here at Kenilworth Road survival still possible Barclays thumping ball high up the middle there was a foul by Morris who thought he'd broken clear on Ashley Young and you can see by Morris's body language he knew that he was going to concede a free kick yeah Ashley Young not happy at all I mean if it had just been a trip over a decent first touch and he would have been in but it's a crossfield pass and he's just pulled him down very strong Carlton Morris but it was a foul a clever ball by Pickford from the free kick out to the near side the Everton right and Godfrey infield with the pass to Gay who has to shrug aside the challenge of Adebayo and now Garner steers the ball infield to the feet of Harrison and Ducore in the centre circle Everton a team understandably playing with confidence at the moment attacking the end that is split between home and away supporters the old Oak Road end of the ground away to our right as Adebayo retreating into his own territory is tripped and fouled and that's a Luton free kick it's hard to believe isn't it Scott what 16 days until the end of the Premier League season all the drama of course live with us on the Talk Sport Network we've got all the playoff matches live and exclusive with us including all three playoff finals we've got WSL with Manchester City and Chelsea the two teams in contention for the title both in action on Sunday Crystal Palace against Manchester United on Monday the live football is it's ever present at the moment on the Talk Sport Network if you say all the games it'd be half time yes that's it yeah we're back to the action on the field right on cue as Calvert Lewin is fouled and that'll be a free kick to Everton just shy of halfway and actually in fact 13 and a half minutes played after Luton's very high tempo and dynamic start Everton are working their way into the game well you know let's just say that it's died down a little bit shall we say from Luton but Everton haven't really done anything they haven't tested Kaminsky haven't had a shot on or off target we haven't seen Calvert Lewin really get on the ball we haven't seen the, the two wide players get on the ball we haven't seen DeCorey get on the ball now we're just seeing, just starting to see them do that and that's what they need to do and Calvert Lewin glides out to the near side the right deep into Luton territory but he's converged upon by two in that bright orange Luton shirt and one of them is Chong to poke it out to play and that's an Everton throw level with the edge of the 18 yard box and closer to the Everton dugout with Sean Dyche and Ian Wone, his uh, trusted assistant and standing on the edge of the technical areas he has got the tracksuit on again Sean Dyche the tracksuit that served him well of late so they're going to win is that what you're saying superstitious it's all about football the managers and all that yeah apparently so, so I'm sure you had your your fair share of, sub no, of uh, I, I, superstitions I, I tried very hard not to Joe <laughs> he was young in the left back position for Everton now the giant Branthwaite who with Tarkovsky has formed an excellent centre-back pairing this season Young's early ball intelligent pass threaded up the inside left channel Calvert-Lewin is there peeling away towards the corner flag he rolls it back into the path of Dwight McNeil who scampers into the box he's tripped McNeil was he no penalty says the referee it was Ted and Mengi tracking back who made a slightly risky challenge McNeil only just getting to his feet but the referee I have to say didn't look remotely interested Tim Robinson well he certainly went down and he was inside the box and I think there was a little bit of contact I think there may be communication ongoing here possibly between the referee and the VAR I, I, well I'm seeing one angle it looked like Mengi's from even though he's from behind got a touch of the ball but actually from another angle it doesn't look like he has so I, we could be sitting here for another three or four minutes now well the referee has certainly stopped the game even though the ball had gone out of play we haven't restarted and he's pointed to his ear the referee Tim Robinson as if to suggest there is a conversation taking place with David Coote Tarkovsky uh, of Everton is making his protestations heard and the Everton captain and his team won't get a penalty after a little bit of chat between the referee and the VAR it's an Everton throw and Ashley Young gets on with it on the far side the left 0-0 the score 
Luton against Everton. And here is Barkley for Luton. Ten yards into opposition territory. Quickly out to the right, Monia Didma, whose layoff is a poor one. Intercepted by Gay. And Everton can build from the defensive third again. Tarkovsky's under pressure. Let it run across his body to dart away from Adebayo. And Tarkovsky now to Gay, who can build potentially an Everton attack. A any further thoughts, Scott, on well, that penalty I, appeal? I just, just saw that last replay. I, I'm not sure he gets the ball, but what I would say is, I, I think, you know, we've seen in Europe how well referees are doing it and how well it seems to, to work VAR in the European matches because it's hardly used. And I think less is more. There's a very high bar now, I think, that, that Howard Webb has put in there. So, although I do think there was contact on there and it, it could easily have been given as a penalty, I think it was the right decision not to. Let's not talk about VAR all the time. The referee thought it wasn't. It wasn't a clear and obvious error. Let's crack on. Free kick to Everton, who've been beaten twice by Luton this season in League and Cup. Both games at Goodison Park. Everton free kick is just to the left of the edge of the centre circle. So about 12 yards into Luton territory. McNeil has placed the ball very deliberately here, the number seven. Everton a real threat from set plays. That free kick is deep to the back post. It's over the head of Branthwaite. His central defensive colleague Tarkovsky retrieves it now Harrison infield from the right to James Garner to deliver that's blocked by the back of Doughty it'll drop down towards halfway Young has to hurriedly hook it over his shoulder towards the edge of the box Morris is back to climb and head clear for Luton but the sack is still on here for Everton as Garner crosses deep from the right and it spins off the head of Gabe Osho and it goes behind for an Everton corner remember Everton have scored very close to half their Premier League goals from set plays this season yeah better passage of play from Everton and Garner just got in a really important position we know how good he is with that right foot of his he put in a wicked ball it's really good defending just a flick on but again you're right set piece both these teams are dangerous at that Luton nil Everton nil Everton already safe a draw not enough to take Luton out to the bottom three McNeil's out swinging floated corner left footed good header away by Morris through a crowd excellent height and distance on that Young's little glancing touch square to Harrison under pressure from Chong. Harrison steers it wide to the near side, the right, and Garner back in field to Tarkovsky, back out wide to Garner again. Neat triangular passing from Everton. Tarkovsky again involved. And now Brantway. Everybody inside the Luton half bar, the Everton goalkeeper Pickford. Dwight McNeil outside left channel, one on one with Doughty. Great cross in. Maggie got a touch. Brilliant save by the goalkeeper. And now Garner from the edge of the box tried to place it. Mengi there to stretch a leg and make a really important block. Luton trying to break through Adebayo. And what a save that was from close range by Kaminsky. Otherwise, it would have been an own goal from Ted and Mengi without any question. Yeah, double chance from Everton. And they really have just in the last few minutes stepped it up now. I just wonder whether they've just... The legs weren't quite working in the first 10 minutes. Now they have in the last few. And a double chance there. First of all, great save from Kaminsky. And then a really good defensive block where... Was it Mengi who did it? It was Mengi again. Involved twice in the space of a couple of moments and Thomas Kaminsky who has been one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League in terms of how he's been worked this season might have to make another save here Calvert-Lewin steers in across goal and Rhys Burke is there to tuck it behind and Everton now are really piling on the pressure nil-nil but Everton are having the better of it with 20 minutes play yeah they are just that ball from the left a great ball for McNeil you have to say and Mengi's one of those where as a defender you're facing your own goal you can't let it go but you're not going to get proper contact on it Kaminsky dealt with that really well but those balls now the diagonal balls in behind the Luton defence really troubling them his corners at the Oak Road end in front of the Everton fans behind the goal floated in again by McNeil up went Godfrey Tarkovsky there too Luton will hack it away here and Barkley in fact well I thought he was going to hack it away he rather steps elegantly towards the right hand side and he's won a throw underestimated Ross Barkley there and Barkley he has really uh, reinvigorated his career in what has been a very successful spell at Luton this season regardless of whether or not they go down so throw to Luton in the right back position and Everton have had the biggest chance so far Mengi nearly put it past his own goalkeeper but Kaminsky made a super save Luton nil, Everton nil. on Talk Sport with Now don't forget that with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Luton against Everton live right now and contract free with a Now membership search now sports and VAR is checking for a possible penalty after that last Everton corner and I wonder is that for a potential handball is it for a potential clash inside the box here he comes Tim Robinson to take a check 
on his pitch side monitor and this could be massive in Luton Town season they face a potential penalty here well it is absolutely and you know when the referee goes over there's normally a very big reason for it and they very rarely sticks with it well the corner's delivered in from the left by Dwight McNeil was there a foul on uh, Branthwaite inside the penalty area possibly I off think, the ball Mengi I think the two of them are going at it I mean Branthwaite tries to to roll Mengi he's not allowing that the referee is right down below us here right below our commentary position Tim Robinson and he, we can see that he's in conversation with the VAR he's watching the slow motion replays again and again Andros Townsend the Luton sub is just behind him arms outstretched he can't believe it the fourth official is telling him to go back towards the halfway line and get away from the monitor the problem is Joe he's got both arms around him so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he says this is a penalty it's not just one arm it's both what will Tim Robinson signal here he moves away from the pitch side monitor this Brand could be a big moment in the game Branthwaite jumps up and he has said penalty it. to Everton Branthwaite fouled by Mengi off the ball as the corner was floated in and Everton will have a penalty kick and it's Ashley Young who's got the ball in his hands at the moment at least for Everton the former Watford man looks like he's going to step up to potentially score a goal that would rank as a huge blow in Luton's race to try and stay in the Premier League after that VAR check the penalty is given and midway through the first half Everton with the chance to go in front the thing is many people will say it's soft and I, I don't like VAR getting involved I really don't but he's got both arms around him Branthwaite once he tries to go past him realises he's got both arms around him he, he sort of jumps up and goes down but still you can't be defending like that he's given it to Calvert-Lewin has Young held the ball for a few seconds and I think we did expect Calvert-Lewin to take the penalty kick in front of the Everton fans and the Luton fans behind the goal it's split almost evenly between the two sets of fans 23 minutes played on Talk Sport and Everton with a chance to go in front big moment this in Luton season can Kaminsky the goalkeeper bail them out Calvert Lewin has had to re-spot the ball here the number nine looming towards his target Kaminsky stands on his line all in green arms outstretched up into the air now from Kaminsky it'll be a short right footed run up from Dominic Calvert-Lewin this to give Everton the lead and he does down the middle Kaminsky dive to his right away from the ball and Dominic Calvert-Lewin scores a goal that could rank as a huge blow to Luton's survival hopes in the Premier League Kenilworth Road trying to rouse its team but it's Everton who lead again Luton nil Everton 1 it's a massive blow Luton started so well but Everton have really come into it in the last 10 minutes and it's just a really soppy goal to give away you can't do that and Kaminsky almost saves it as well it's not really a great penalty Calvert-Lewin just tries to put it down the middle quite often goalkeepers dive one way if it had just stood up then it would have looked a silly penalty in the end it's a goal and it's always seen as a good one but again just looking at pictures of Mengi on Branthwaite he goes down reasonably easily but you can't have both arms around him it's as simple as that it's lazy defending and it's a goal that of course will bring joy to Everton it'll also bring joy to supporters of Nottingham Forest long way still to go in the game but as it stands if Forest were to beat Sheffield United tomorrow live on TalkSport 2 at 3 they would go four points clear of Luton and there would only be two games to go in the Premier League season it was a foul by Mengi on Branthwaite Calvert-Lewin stepped up and Everton lead by goal to nil here beneath the floodlights and with Forrest having the, the, the better goal difference as well you know you're looking for Forrest to lose both games and Luton to win both games so Luton have to get themselves back into this they really do Barnsley nil Bolton 1 is a half time score in the League 1 playoff semi-final first leg we've got commentary on Talk Sport 2 right now and all of the drama between now and the end of the season with the TalkSport network. More live football than anybody else. Luton Trail Everton here. Barkley's got the ball just shy of halfway. Pokes it on to Morris. Back it goes to Lakonga. Lakonga steers it wide right towards Onyadinma. Had to retreat to get possession. Because the ball is behind him. And Lakonga now spins inside his own half, away from the onrushing Decore. And now Barkley. Good step over from Barkley to wriggle away from Garner. But then Garner slides in 
to snap back at his heels and win it back. The Luton fans want a free kick. The referee, Tim Robinson, again says no. And you have to credit Everton, a team with nothing to play for, but a team clearly enjoying their football and playing with a great deal of confidence at the moment as it stands, heading for four wins in a row. Yeah, I think if you look at the recent form of both these sides, you would say that Everton should win this hands down. But because we know Everton are safe, because we know Luton have given it their all all season and will continue to do so as well and especially after the first 10 minutes where Luton played really well and Everton were very much on the back foot you thought okay maybe Everton have got sand between their toes but no they've come back into it very professional outfit and now their good form is is showing exactly what's happened in the in the last 10 or so minutes Everton the better side at the moment a minute and 45 seconds with the VAR check and Calvert Lewin just about beat Kaminsky it wasn't the best hit penalty right down the middle but the goalkeeper had already committed to his right hand side here is Kaminsky on the ball now for Luton playing from right to left but Kenilworth Road is a little more subdued now that Everton have taken the lead here is Mengi midway inside his own half he's did it for Tomoris he's found a pocket of space darts into the Everton half wide he goes to Omnia Didma level the edge of the 18 yard area Omnia Didma attacking Ashley Young he's on the corner of the penalty area back he goes now to Burke joining the attack Burke the centre half crosses it's spun back out for a deflection to the feet of Omnia Didma again his cross is beaten away by Branthwaite and then hammered further clear by Young up towards the halfway line that's a bit better from Luton Town but they are on a very poor run of late their form has really plummeted since early to mid-February in fairness they have had a lot of injuries to deal with over the course of the season as well yeah, no, you, you can say that for a lot of teams in the Premier League yeah. can't you but you know, for a club like Luton the size of the squad they've got they do need their big players fit on by Kaminsky high ball driven downfield up to the Far side, the right, the halfway line. It was controlled on his chest by Burke initially. Now Lakonga with the yellow boots on into the centre spot and Barkley. Barkley pings it from right to left. Alfie Doughty joins the attack. He took it in his stride. Now he moves towards the edge of the dead ball line. He whips in the cross, left footed. Back post is Morris. Can't find Adebayo. Adebayo might still reach it on the rebound, but he was surrounded by the grey shirts of Everton. And Garner hooks the ball clear up towards halfway. And now a miscued header by Mengi has dropped down towards McNeil. Beaten to it by Burke. Much better from Luton Town the home crowd are on their feet they're training by Golton Hill Morris trying to surge beyond Ashley Young who slides in firm but fair Luton throw on the far side of the field Luton nil Everton won and when they get this crowd behind them it's a really energetic and exciting place to be what a game of football we got on our hands and what an atmosphere from the Kenny as well brilliant wing play you have to say from Alfie Dalti just getting at Ben Godfrey slowly on his right foot little step over getting half a yard doesn't need to go past him hasn't got the pace to go past him but does enough to get a really good cross to the far post Carlton Morris not quite able to get the proper knockdown for Adebayo but Luton now very much on the front foot you'll never give up yeah, that's what, the one thing you know about this side Onya Dimmer takes the throw right wing position far side of the field back it goes to Burke and now Barkley and 10 yards into it opposition territory some of that momentum from the Luton attack has slowed a little they had to recycle and go back to the halfway line Osho now steps into the Everton half square ball about 15 yards to his right to find Lekonga now Burke on a slight overlap Burke has got Onya Dinmer in possession again on that far side the right wing lots of Luton banners and flags behind Onya Dinmer on that far side and now Lekonga turns away from Decore Luton at the moment a little one paced on the attack quite in contrast to what we saw a minute or so ago and Doughty's layoff in field is a poor one towards Chong McNeil uh, was there to win it back momentarily though just as I say that Luton have regained possession again Lekonga dinks it in high towards Adebayo he's brought it down on his chest Adebayo what a finish Luton are level and in emphatic fashion they've got Elijah Adebayo back in the team and he's done exactly what he needs to do he took it down in his chest. He got past Ashley Young and he ran it beyond Pickford. Luton, maybe, showing some survival instinct. Luton won, Everton won. Brilliant goal. Fantastic from Luton, you have to say. It came from Alfred Alto, who gave the ball away, first of all, then he won it back. And Sammy Lacongo got the ball and he's looked up and you can see they're aiming for it. Trying to peel on to Ashley Young. Adebayo, he doesn't just try and head it back, he knows he's got him. He waits for Ashley Young to try and head the ball. 
He just chests it down himself and gets there before Branthwaite with his left foot. That is a fantastic goal from Adebayo, showing strength, composure, and a wonderful left foot finish as well, giving Jordan Pickford no chance and no choice at all. What a game we've got on our hands here, Joe. It was a physical mismatch. The challenge involving Adebayo and Ashley Young. Slight delay to the restart here. But it is Luton 1, Everton 1. The referee does blow the whistle to restart the game. Maybe there was a bit of chat with VAR again. Now, look, what, what it probably was is, as he's chested the ball down, he's just moved Ashley Young out of the way a little bit, but VAR cannot oh, get on. involved in that. I know. There was I nothing know. wrong with that at all. It was a brilliant bit of strike play. Tenth goal of the season. And Everton have finally conceded a goal. They've gone three matches without letting one in. But Luton are level here. 1-1. That's not enough to take them out of the drop zone. Only a win will do that tonight. No, but where it was good news for Forrest and Burnley, it's not so good news now, is it? You're absolutely right, Scott. And Luton would go two points above Nottingham Forest if they were to find a victory tonight in the Premier League. Here is Doughty feeding Adebayo on the halfway line. How they've missed him. Godfrey tracking back makes a good tackle for Everton. And Everton have been the better team for half an hour or so. But Luton just finding some momentum back in the match again and with that has come an equaliser yeah absolutely a really good play though intelligent play from Lukonga great ball just looking up and also from Adebayo just peeling out onto the full back that he knows he's always going to have a battle with Brantwaite and Tarkovsky but with Ashley Young it's a mismatch as you said great play still to chest it down and a really good finish as well time running out in the Premier League season so much still to be decided the league title two from three for the drop maybe Champions League places not confirmed yet for Aston Villa who are the favourites to get fourth we're really looking forward to the end of the season and we hope you can join us on the Talk Sport Network Luton 1 Everton 1 long diagonal ball by Barkley towards Adebayo again headed away by Godfrey it drops down to Chong who flicks his header into the area Godfrey climbing to nod it clear only as far as Adebayo six foot four he's causing all sorts of problems he's turned away from his opposite number Harrison Luton fans get to their feet behind the goal Adebayo wins a corner in front of the Kenilworth Road end 1-1 for the latest odds head to Ladbrokes right now Luton 19-10 Everton 8-5 the draw 9-5 that's all thanks to Ladbrokes 18 plus B gambleaware.org and here is Scott Minter. Yeah, they're a different side, aren't they? With the likes of Adebayo back and Chong and Morris and Lukonga as well. Alfred Doughty down the left, putting in those great crosses that we know what Luton strikers thrive on. And now, you know, this game's gone back and forth, isn't it? Luton with a great start and Everton in control, going one nil up. Now it's Luton with momentum. Raucous noise at Kenilworth Road. Alfie Doughty, big deep breath, corner on this near side the left, two arms up into the air, he drills it in left footed towards Osho, headed away, only as far as Laconga on the edge of the penalty area, angles the ball wide to Osho again, Osho taking on Young, dead ball line, floats in the cross and Pickford had to gather that high above his head at the near post, it was almost a cross come shot and Pickford, England's number one, handled it well. And there are reports of course that he might have to leave the club, might be sold in the summer, Jordan Pickford. Well, Always gives the impression of somebody who loves playing for Everton, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, obviously recently signed a new contract not that long ago, so I think Everton can certainly ask for a decent price, but I hope for their sake they don't have to sell him. And Everton have done such a tremendous job this season, particularly in responding to points deductions. If you look at how they've responded, they've almost instantly responded with victories. Here is McNeil towards the edge of the penalty area, robbed of possession by Chong, who then darts over the halfway line to press Tarkovsky and Adebayo trying to chase down Brantway Morris likewise on Ashley Young Everton are finding it hard now to play out of their own half and Young has to go back to Pickford and you get the sense that crowd and team are feeding off each other here Luton 1, Everton 1 35 intriguing minutes played with the noise almost deafening at times sky a midnight blue the rain has stopped now and Everton with Idrissa Gay, fantastic ball out to the right wing and Harrison whose first touch wasn't great allowed Doughty to get back and steer it forward and then in the end Luton win a throw you know what Joe I've no idea which way this game is going to go <laughs> sometimes Everton on the back foot then they put in a, a little bit of class pattern of play and look like they're going to go and score another goal and then Luton with the 
the fans behind them as well. You know, everyone's in unison here, aren't they? Well, that's the beauty of it for for you in the Premier League. Arsenal against Bournemouth tomorrow, 12.30 on Talk Sport. Arsenal with the chance to go four points clear of Manchester City. The final day of the championship season is on Talk Sport 2 with Ipswich, who only need a point to go up against Huddersfield, who are, to all intents and purposes, already down. That's our featured commentary, but we'll also keep a very close eye on the race for the playoffs and the relegation battle. Huge game in particular at St Andrews. Birmingham at risk of going down up against playoff chasing Norwich City. It's all happening up and down the divisions. Clearance away from Pickford only reaches the halfway line and Burke is there to seize upon it with a lack of pressure initially on in the Luton centre half and he's got beyond Decore and Calvert-Lewin. He's run about 30 yards here to the corner of the area. On your dinner on the overlap crosses and Tarkovsky's there to steer it out of play. High into the stand with the outside of his boots. It's a Luton throw, 10 yards from the corner flag. Well, how was Burke allowed to run with the ball first of all make the tackle just a little bit of a turn and suddenly he's running at Everton's back four good play just looked up there was no one quite in there so he played it out wide a decent ball in and it's a, it's a good clearance one thing Tarkovsky wouldn't want is coming off his right foot and going into the back of the net plenty of orange shirts forward here Morris looks to spin and turn away on that dead ball line back it goes to Burke a left footed in squeaking cross Alfie Doughty peels away he's chested it down on the back post he dinks it into the area but behind Adebayo and Chop and the ball is retrieved by Gay. Gay scampers forward up towards the midway point of his own half. Checks back in field and finds Harrison. Neat drift away from Barkley by Harrison. And Gay just settles the ball down again. Very comfortable on the ball. Very elegant midfield player. And he passes it forward to the halfway line. And Garner. Garner back to Godfrey in the right back position for Everton. Godfrey right in front of the two dugouts. There was a foul by Barkley on Garner earlier on in that move. And Everton want to take the free kick quickly but... They're not going to be allowed to by the referee. First of all, don't make the foul. They, they, Everton played a really good set of passes there and, and Harrison was in down the right wing. And then once he's brought the foul or called the foul, let them play. There must only have been a yard in it. Yeah, it's needless, isn't it, really? Everton should have been allowed to take that quickly. Because the free kick shouldn't have been given in the first place. Just wait a couple of seconds. Everton were, they weren't through in goal, but they certainly would have had a good opportunity down the right-hand side. Here is Godfrey with the red and white boots on. Out to Harrison on the near side, the right. Quick ball threaded forward to the underlapping Garner, who steers a low ball into the right hand edge of the penalty area where Calvert Lewin had been making a run. Swept out of play by Gay Bosho. And it's a free kick for Everton, who are playing towards the end that houses those travelling fans. It's 1 1 on Talk Sport. If you're just joining us, Calvert Lewin with the penalty for Everton. Adebayo with a great equaliser for Luton Town. What a way to score! His 10th goal of the season for Adebayo. Formerly of Walsall. So many Luton players with great backstories as Decore picks up possession for Everton. And now McNeil in a central position, square towards Gay. He's wriggled away from Chong, not beyond Laconga. And then a loose pass by Godfrey high up inside the Luton half. He's managed to track back and do brilliantly there, Godfrey, to win it back fairly off Chong again. And now Everton are suddenly having a good spell. In the 40th minute of the game, Harrison has isolated Doughty in a one-on-one. -on -one. He whips the cross in left-footed, but it's well beyond that far post. Maybe he was trying to go for goal there, Jack Harrison, but harmlessly wide, and Luton have a goal kick. No, but he's finding more and more the ball, isn't he? On the right-hand side, Jack Harrison, as he comes inside. I think it's just an over-hit cross, quite a bad cross, actually, that made it look like it could have been a shot, but could have curled a little bit more in the top corner. Luton 1, Everton 1 on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent a Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes, so if you've got a plan, they've got a van. Long ball by Mengi, high upfield towards Morris. Good header away by Branthwaite. And now Gay, and just a couple of yards or so inside Luton territory. McNeil, tall for a winger, ball infield to Gay again. Back now to Branthwaite, just shy of the halfway line. And Gay collects possession once more, deepest lying midfield player for Everton as McNeil. Rolls the pass about 50 yards all the way back to the feet of his goalkeeper. Now to Corey on halfway. Touches it out first time to the left and Ashley Young. More booze for Young. And then McNeil threaded infield to Decore, who couldn't quite find a, a better touch to send it into the path of Calvert Lewin. That was good football though from Everton. 1 1 it remains. Godfrey, right of centre, midway into the Luton half. Further wide is 
Uh, Jack Harrison attacking the right-hand edge of the penalty area. His cross is overhit right-footed. McNeil will try to reach it, try to sprint to keep it in play, but it was somewhat of a ballooned cross by Harrison, and it's harmlessly out of play for a Luton throw in their right-back position. Yeah, just where a couple of minutes ago he came inside onto his left foot and overhit across. He certainly went down the outside and overhit that one. But I think what we're seeing now is still Everton wrestling back the the possession and the tempo of the game and they're the ones who are getting the ball wider now certainly down their right hand side with Jack Harrison whereas Alfie doughty has been bombing on down the left he's now having to play as that almost left back so the bottom of the Premier League looks like this Sheffield United already down Burnley 19th 24 points Luton 18th 26 points Forest 17th 26 points only goal difference keeping Luton out or, well, inside the Premier League relegation zone at the moment. If they get a goal here, they'll move out of the bottom three. Two from three to go down, we know that. Here is Pickford on the edge of his own penalty area. Little ball square played to the feet of Tarkovsky, who will spin and turn and roll it back to his goalkeeper once again here. And Pickford in possession, and just inside his own penalty area, Decore and dropping a little deeper to try and receive the ball as Pickford goes long eventually up towards the halfway line then Godfrey is clattered into by Chong and that'll be a free kick to Everton They're right in front of the near side touchline yeah, it was definitely a foul I was given a yellow card for that as well I think just because Chong dived in there where he didn't need to and certainly caught Godfrey I think now is it just coming up to half time just not so many chances it's the shot on goal from either side both clinical in that sense McNeil is standing over this free kick it's only a slither inside the Luton half as we look at it atmosphere is ebbed and flowed a little bit it's a it's quieter and more nervy now and this free kick to Everton as I say just inside the Luton half McNeil is just placing the ball Everton are such a threat from those set plays Branthwaite and Tarkovsky are both forward Luton trying to hold as high defensive line as they can it's about Six yards from the edge of the box as McNeil pumps in the free kick high towards the back post. It'll reach. Branthwaite heads it back across. Tarkovsky tried to steer it, steer it goalwards and it's almost cleared from off the line by Ross Barkley. Maybe wasn't going in, but it was a crucial intervention from the edge of the six yard box by Luton's number six to deny Everton's number six, Tarkovsky. Yeah, but how can a 50 yard high ball be allowed to just bounce in the box and then cause so much havoc? Luton have to get there first. I actually thought an Everton player was tripped over. It wasn't a penalty. And Luton, poor defending there, causing havoc. Everton with that ball into the box. Both centre-halves nearly combining to give Everton the lead back. Just over a minute of normal time left at the end of the first half. And well, I'll tell you what, Joe, I'm just looking at Adebayo. And he was grabbing hold of Tarkovsky, who's gone around him, and he's still almost rugby tackling him. We've got little monitors in our commentary position here, so access to all of the instant replays Barnsley nil, Bolton 2 in the League 1 playoff semi-final first leg Dion Charles has got his and Bolton second so Bolton taking command all of the playoffs live on the TalkSport network Adebayo surging down the Luton left he's the man whose goal has made it 1-1 Doughty's he's in support great overlapping run great control deflected low ball in is steered upfield by Branthwaite who was able to clear Osho has then beaten Calvert Lewin to it. Back to the halfway line and Mengi now. It's a small, tight surface here at Kenilworth Road. The ball is with Burke on the far side of the field. Quickly finds Morris. And Morris, little nudge in field towards Onya Dinma. Onya Dinma trying to shrug aside McNeil. He's done very well there, Onya Dinma, to win the throw off Ashley Young. And we're hearing there'll be six added minutes at the end of the first half can Luton maybe threaten to turn the game around Scott Minter I definitely think Luton down the right hand side believe they can you know exploit Ashley Young playing as a left back you've got three really solid players in that Everton back four and then there's Ashley Young high ball hoisted towards the back post Doughty on the volley hit it and it spat up off the turf and was gathered by Pickford into his chest not enough power behind the strike from Alfie Doughty who undoubtedly has been one of Luton's best performers in the Premier League this season I think he's been absolutely brilliant for Luton this season I really do maybe just not quite the levels he was earlier on in the season 
but with his left foot again he's not, not the quickest of players but he doesn't need to because he's skillful gets half a yard whips in great balls we know how direct Luton can be Decores won it back edge of the D and the shot the rasping drive is blocked came off the back of Mengi Luton have got to be careful because Everton have the players in form and in confidence to make them pay as Decore goes in search of what would be a first goal in 14 appearances rare under Sean Dyche for Decore to go on a run without scoring like that one through the six at it one one the score Crossfield ball by Barkley is headed away by Young stooping in front of Onyadinma to win it back and here come Everton here with Calvert-Lewin in the centre circle driving towards the edge of the Luton penalty area unchallenged here Calvert-Lewin he's five yards from the edge of the box he's had to lay it back to Garner Garner takes up possession couple of touches and then wide to Harrison near side the right in swinging cross is a good one only half cleared and it's deflected behind for an Everton corner Luton looked really vulnerable to high balls pumped into the box it was a half clearance by one of the centre halves I think it was Mengi onto the heels of Osho and then it deflected narrowly wide that's exactly what happened again Jack Harrison getting on the ball coming inside on his left foot putting a really good ball to the far post and Luton not defending any confidently here is Dwight McNeil in front of the Everton fans in swinging corner left footed high to the back post Tarkovsky is there Garner slipped as he hit it on the volley Luton struggling to get it away though Decore tries to nod it back in only half away by Chong this time on the edge of the penalty area Harrison has juggled the ball and he's got it wide to McNeil in first half stoppage time here Nearly two and a half of these six added minutes in the first half have been played and Everton have won a throw midway into Luton territory and the game is being played very much in patches by Luton. Actually for most of the first half Everton have been the more dominant side. 1-1. I think it's really ebbed and flowed. I really do. I think Everton have looked dangerous whenever they've tried to get the ball out wide but then so too Luton as well. As I say they're looking for that cross field pass to try and isolate whether it be Morris or whether it be Adebayo against Ashley Young. That's how the goal came about. Luton started well, Everton came back into it, then it was Luton, then Everton. I hope more the same in the second half. Harrison has just tried to cross and it's sliced up into the air and hit the sloping iron roof away to our right of that small stand behind the goal. Now then, Luton looking to break. Mengi, intelligent high ball out towards the right-hand side and the run of Onya Dinma, who again is in a very advanced attacking position to take on Ashley Young and Luton have won themselves a throw 10 yards into opposition territory I don't think Rob Edwards will be too displeased at all by what he's seen particularly the way that Luton have managed to fight back against an Everton team that are tough to break down no and he'll be disappointed the fact that the way they gave the goal away you know it's poor defending lazy defending for Mengi on a corner just go with your guy keep one arm on him but yeah but not both and he's pulled Branthwaite down the Congas played it back to Kaminsky and Kaminsky will clip the ball high downfield. Morris wins the header. We're into the 49th minute of the first half. Onya Dinma has got beyond a rather tentative Brandweight. He's laid it back to Morris on the corner of the area. Morris sizes up a shot. And it's just a yard or so wide of the far post. Pickford may be unsighted. Morris head in his hands. Very close there. It looked like at first glance to putting Luton in front for the first time. Yeah, really good play. Once Morris gets on the ball, it's a definite shot. But Adebayo is coming in at the far post wonder how close he was to it very close indeed I don't know why he didn't stick out a leg my goodness me Colton Morris is thinking that was so close but Adebayo should be thinking the same Luton won Everton won it remains I don't rule Burnley out of the relegation fight either remember Burnley have only lost one of their last eight in the Premier League Burnley only two points from safety Burnley Nottingham Forest on the final day could potentially be very interesting and Luton will host Fulham here on the final day of the season. That would be great, wouldn't it, if it all went down to the, that final game for all three teams and two of them playing each other. And if it does, we will be there. We know that Everton are safe and uh, Brentford realistically as well because of their excellent goal difference and the fact that they, they can't be leapfrogged by uh, more than one team. And that would be barring a strange bit of mathematics. Out on the right, the far side for Luton is on your dinner. Now on the overlap is Burke. Burke's right-footed cross, first time to the back post and out of Bayo. It's skimmed off the head of Harrison, only half away. Doughty down by the dead ball line, last 30 seconds of the first half. 1-1 one, one it remains. Doughty goes on the outside of Harrison, swings in the cross, left-footed. Morris is underneath it, looping header, off the line by Godfrey. 
Luton so close right at the end of the first half. It's won back by Mengi, industriously, in front of Calvert-Lewin. Barkley is under pressure from Ducore, and he's been blocked off by Gay. And Everton have won it back, and Ducore will size up a pass for McNeil in a central position. And Luton have suddenly got to be careful here, because they're backpedalling as McNeil races towards the left, then checks back into the centre, dinks it in high towards Calvert-Lewin, who's sliding in. The ball zips off the wet surface, out of play, and so ends a tremendous first half at Kenilworth Road and Rob Edwards and Sean Dyche do the, the march from the halfway line, the near side towards the tunnel on the far side of the field Penny for the thoughts of both managers at half time here Luton at the moment not quite heading for the win that would let them escape the relegation zone at least temporarily but they are putting up a heck of a fight Calvert-Lewin's penalty gave Everton the lead but Adebayo with a brilliant bit of control and a fine snapshot beyond Pickford makes the half-time score Luton 1 Everton 1 well Rob Edwards asked the Luton Town fans to bring the noise tonight and they certainly have although they're directing it negatively at the officials at the moment uh, if the Premier League table was decided by decibel level then I'm sure Luton would be safe Unfortunately, it's not, and despite a very bright start, Everton have grown into the game, they were gifted a penalty, and having secured their place in the Premier League for next season, looked to be cementing Luton's place in the Championship for next season. But the Hatters have stirred, and Adebayo crashed home a well-taken equaliser to show there is life in Luton Town. Yet Scott Minter it has been a great half of football to sink your teeth into Luton were at it right at the start they had a bit of a lull when Everton scored they're right back at it again now what have you made of that first period? I've loved it I've absolutely loved it for being from the neutral that I am and I mean look you're here at the Kenny and you can just feel the passion as you say the decibels here and you know pound for pound you can't get many in here that you can in the, the big boys stadium but boy are they making the noise brilliant start from Luton fair play to Everton for coming back into it you know, Rob Edwards won't be unhappy with that first half, but he will really be disappointed with Mengi, who I really like. I think he's a very good defender. But to do that in such a crucial situation, he's just lazy defending. And then you go a goal down. But again, Luton showing character and very clever play with Adebayo just drifting off onto, onto Ashley Young. Let me tell you, I've had a few six-foot centre-half, <laughs> six-foot-four strikers come onto me a few times. And what Ashley Young's got to do is, is not even go for it as such but make sure that if Adebayo brings it down that he makes sure he gets that second touch and gets that tackle in and he didn't he went for it great play you have to say from the centre forward chesting it down moving out the way and then getting the strike in on his left foot before another defender can come in it's been a great first half I've really enjoyed it there was a distinct difference in physicality between <laughs> Adebayo and Ashley Young it was like when your kids come home from school and take off their school bag he just threw him down as if he was getting, he did. getting he did. rid of his books by the front door to be and, and that's honest. why maybe VAR just had a quick look at it but no nah, you're not going to give that as a foul and it was a definite goal uh, the penalty fair shout at the other end Jareth Branthwaite six foot four five himself absolutely massive Calvert-Lewin converts from the penalty spot for his eighth of the season it was a weird one because it is a foul like he, he, it's like he wants to waltz with Gareth uh, with Jared Branthwaite and Ted and Mengi he puts both arms right round him almost gives him a cuddle but Branthwaite you know he, 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 pl he plays for it I know fans are disappointed to see that but it is a foul it, it's a foul and I don't care how big you are if you're getting pulled and to be fair to, to Branthwaite he, he's kind of turned him and then he's tried to go and you know maybe once and then twice and then he's realised he's not letting me go so what, what choice does he have okay he went down a little bit easier but he's got both arms around him mm. that's again it's really poor defending stick one arm get get touch tight in that sense but but don't pull him down don't give VAR or the referee a chance to give a penalty there in what is such a tight game and you know you have to say really it, it's, it's a must win game I'm I'm still torn whether it's it's an all or nothing. I don't want to be out there and say they have to win this game, otherwise they're down. You know, we've seen points dropped elsewhere, and you know, Forest and Burnley especially have still got difficult games to go. But Forest, you would think, would get at least a point at, at Sheffield United. So if they do, then really Luton do have to win here. So it's a crucial 45 minutes, and it's a big mistake for Mengi. Again, a defender I think has done very well in the Premier League for for Luton this season credit to Everton what they've brought to the game oh, it doesn't mean much to them after they secured their survival but they have been at it and looked maybe more controlled in possession 
we use that phrase, it is a cliche of, of, of Luton throwing the kitchen sink at it, but that is what they have done. They've played really good football in periods, particularly out wide at the moment. I think it's too chilly a night to be sitting on the bench with your shorts on. So it looks like Andros Townsend may be introduced in the second half to maybe get some more deliveries into the box because that's been a, a key area. You just want Adebayo to maybe make those runs more often to the front post and give Tarkovsky and Branthwaite something to think about because he hasn't done that often enough. Yeah, I'd be surprised if there are any changes bang on half-time. I think Rob Edwards might just give it another 10 yeah. or so minutes and, and see what's happening. I have to say, Alfie Doughty, you know, on your demo down on the other side, it is 10 times quicker than Doughty, and yet Doughty is the effective one. Mm. He's getting that half a yard just, just before half-time. He was right in front of us. We're so close to the pitch here. We really are. And I'm thinking, he tries to take Jack Harrison on. And I'm thinking, no, you, you haven't got him there. You've got to turn out. Somehow he produces this cross that almost... 40 yards to the, to the back post and they very nearly scored from it whereas on, your dim, dim, your on, the, on the other side it's not being as effective he's trying to run in behind Ashley Young but sometimes he's making that run a little bit too early and he needs to come to feet get the ball and then if he can run at Ashley Young but no I don't see many changes uh, in, uh, at half time at the moment anyway couldn't call this one could you can't call it mate cannot call it and that's the way we want it isn't it absolutely looking forward to a big 45 minutes here on talk sport level between luton and everton remember live on talk sport 2 tonight uh, you can follow the league one playoff semi-final first leg barnsley nil bolton two on 68 minutes a double from dion charles elsewhere live rugby league tonight uh, into the second half huddersfield nil salford 18 it is leeds 22 london broncos four at the break and warrington 12 Hull FC nil at the break as well. Let's get the latest uh, odds next with Ladbrokes. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambleware.org. So in our live and exclusive Premier League action, currently Luton Town 1, Everton 1. For the latest odds, head to Labrooks, where right now you can get Luton at 2-1 to one to go on and win the game. The draw at 6-4, to four. Everton at 9-5. to five. Next goal scorer market sees Colton Morris to score next. Was 5-1, to one, now enhanced to 6-1. to one. And a special for you as well, ascending off in the match, it was 10-3. to three. That is now... Five to one. Those are the latest odds with Labrooks. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Odds update on Talksport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. So finally poised here at Kenilworth Road. Everton took the lead through a penalty from Dominic Calvert Lewin. That was before Elijah Adebayo equalised for the hosts, controlling on his chest, burying past Jordan Bickford. And as it stands, Luton moving level on points with Nottingham Forest, but staying in the relegation zone on goal difference. Still a long way to go in this one at the break. It is Luton 1, Everton 1. Kickoff on Talk Sport. With Enterprise Rent a Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. The Screwfix Bank Holiday event is now on. Make the most of the extra day off with unmissable deals. Like £30 off the Mountfield self-propelled petrol lawnmower, now just £249.99. And save £10 on the DeWalt T-Stack tool storage system, now only £19.99. Shop Bank Holiday Deals now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Price is valid until May 6. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full C's and C's. We all fantasise about our perfect home. Watching the big game cosied up in the snug... Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Uno is now available in McDonald's Happy Meal. So let's see who can shout Uno first. Bring it on. Mm, yes. Yes. Ooh. No! A wild card. <laughs> right. Ah, yes. Back in the game. Yes. Ooh. No! I draw one card. Ah. Uno. <laughs> Better luck next time. Have fun with your Uno cards. Does that one count? Nope. Oh, some fun, some food. It's all inside this Happy Meal. <laughs> Until 7th of May from 11am. Includes one pre-selected book or toy. Uno range comprises toys only, while stocks last. Who are you going for in the racing today? The favourite. And tomorrow? The favourite. And the next day? The favourite. 
The Suns Horse Racing Pullout, the favourite, is now in the paper seven days a week. Yes, that's right, every single day. Bringing you even more top tips, more form guides, more race cards, and all the colours and silks. Get your favourite pullout every day in the sun, the home of racing. Mmm. Mmm. When it's lunch o'clock, I just eat the tortilla naked burrito bowl. Oh, I didn't know you could get those. <laughs> There's a lot you don't know, dear. Well, I know that shirt's not coming back into fashion anytime soon. Too shame. Get tortilla, subway, pret, and more delivered. For lunch and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? Charges apply. Check available restaurants in your area and open in times on justeat.co.uk for details. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with the 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Game night on TalkSport with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Luton versus Everton. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports. 18 plus. Stream via internet. Terms apply. Game day. Exclusive commentary of massive Friday night football. He's done it! Game day countdown live. On Talk Sport. 16 days to go as the Premier League season comes down to the wire and the start of three games for Luton to save their season. It'll be a short, right-footed run-up from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. This to give Everton the lead, and he does! Down the middle, Kaminsky dived to his right, away from the ball, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin scores a goal that could rank as a huge blow to Luton's survival hopes in the Premier League. He's brought it down on his chest, and a bail! What a finish! Luton are level! Luton, maybe, showing some survival instincts. Luton won, Everton won. Luton fighting for a place in the Premier League. Their manager, Rob Edwards, said pre-match, we still believe, and they are showing that here today, coming from behind, Dominic Calvert-Lewin's penalty, putting Everton in front, and Elijah Adebayo firing home to equalise. There have been... Little half chances at both ends, but it has been a thoroughly engrossing contest thus far. And I'm sure it will go right down into the closing stages live here on Talk Sport this evening at the break. At Luton Town 1, Everton 1. I'm alongside Scott Minto, the former Chelsea and West Ham defender. Scott, I did want to basically discuss some news concerning Luton's relegation rivals Nottingham Forest today. Manager Nuno Espirito Santo, defender Nico Williams charged with misconduct by the FA the same day it was announced that the former Premier League referee Mark Clattenburg had resigned from his role as refereeing consultant with the club. The FA, of course, acting uh, after Nuno and Williams' comments after the defeat at Everton last month when Forrest felt they should have had three penalties in the game, while Clattenburg has been warned about his future conduct. Point one, silly for Forrest to risk losing their manager and a player in the heart of a relegation battle with their comments post-match, as aggrieved as they may have been. And point two, Kassenberg saying today that he's leaving his job because he's caused unwanted friction while giving unsolicited interviews and going in the na- in the na- newspapers as well, slagging off the PGMOL was probably the way that that was going to happen. It- it's been a bit of a mess at Forest. It has, and if we deal with that one first, then, you know, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, then... We don't know if decisions that have gone against Nottingham Forest because of, of Klattenberg and the way he and the club have dealt with things. I don't think that's the case, by the way. I really don't. As it happens with those three uh, penalty decisions, I, I, I was on with, with Danny Kelly and Darren Lewis on the, on the Monday, and I actually said what Howard Webb has come out and said. I, I, I thought it was only the third that was the penalty. And they're, they're, look, they're always going to be subjective, but going back to the first one, Hugh, it, it's, it's really difficult for us... And, or easy for us to sit here and say do you know what manager what, 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 just deal with it you know handle it you shouldn't be saying what you said there straight after a game and a player as well I, I think it's even harder for a manager because all the work that he does during the week all the unseen work that the players don't even see all the, the video analysis everything that goes into it that there's sleepless nights and then he sees what he believes I believe he was wrong but he believes he was right that he should have had three penalties 
So to ask them to, to come straight after a game and be, oh, do you know what? That's the way it goes. I think it's difficult. I can't exactly remember what he said, to be honest with you, but if the FA... He obviously implied Stuart Atwell, the VAR, was a Luton Town fan. That's why they hadn't been given the penalties. you obviously got to be careful that you, about implying that. I, mean, I, I thought that was the statement afterwards that, that, was, that was saying that. But in terms of Nuno, I, I actually think Nuno has handled himself very well in the, in the things that he said. And as I say, I think the manager, the person who feels most under pressure of everything is the manager. It's not something you need, though, the bottom line is. And... and Look, I don't think it will affect the relegation in, in, in terms of that, but just got to be careful how you say things. And at least Mark Plattenberg's out of the equation now. And very quickly, concerning your former club, West Ham, in advance talks with the former Wolves boss, Julian Lopetegui. As TalkSport understands, Lopetegui now the clear front runner to replace David Moyes at London Stadium. Confidence on both sides. A deal will be done. The Hammers have also held talks, as we know, with the sporting Lisbon boss, Ruben Amaru. Is that harsh on David Moyes? Well, I think David Moyes has made his mind up. I don't think he wants to stay. I think the offer was there on the table and has been for some time. And I think he's the one who said, I don't want to sign it. And I think it would be the right thing to do now to part ways I personally don't like hearing of these things while he's still in the job but we know what this is what happens and to be fair the owners wouldn't be good owners if they know that David Moyes is not going to be around and they're not trying to sort out another manager Lopetegui do I think he'd be a good manager for, for West Ham absolutely although I wasn't, wasn't quite happy with his attitude the way he left Wolves and look what Gary O'Neill's done since OK Scott Minto thank you very much you're going to hear much more from Scott as the players come back out for the second half here at Kenilworth Road. Just to let you know, over on TalkSport 2, Barnsley have pulled a goal back through Sam Cosgrove. Now, Barnsley won at Bolton 2. You can listen to that one over on TalkSport 2. But here at the break inside Kenilworth Road as Luton must win, really, to keep their survival chances going down to the final day. A level one all with Everton, live and exclusive here on TalkSport. The second half with Scott Minto, the former Chelsea and West Ham defender, and TalkSport's Joe Shannon. Yes, a point for Luton tonight would draw them level with Nottingham Forest on 26, but their goal difference is far inferior. And so that is the biggest problem for Luton at this particular moment. And effectively, Nottingham Forest's goal difference is worth an extra point for them. Absolutely. And I think that's why, without knowing the result of tomorrow, look, if Forrest were going to lose, then you say that they've gained a point if they can keep it like that. But you would think that Forrest would at least get a point against the bottom side, so really Luton do have to win. The second half is off and underway. Luton, the orange shirts and socks and the dark blue shorts. The ball is straight up to goal scorer Adebayo, midway inside Everton territory, but he can't turn the reverse ball into the path of Chong. Good work by Godfrey on the cover to send it back to Pickford. Everton all in grey, playing from right to left and the single-tiered Kenilworth Road end that is packed with Luton fans and Luton playing from left to right beneath the floodlights here. A commentary position is right above the near side left touchline. Steep drop to the touchline below. Here is Adebayo racing up the far side, the Luton right. He's got it through the legs of Branthwaite, but he can't keep it in play. It'll go out for an Everton goal kick. No changes at half-time. Luton, Kaminsky in goal. Burke, Mengi and Osho, the centre-halves on Yadinma and Doughty, the wing-backs. Lekonga and Barkley in midfield. Chong pushing up in support of Morris and Adebayo. Everton pick for the goalkeeper as Ducore dinks the ball down the middle towards Calvert-Lewin. Hooked over his shoulder and thumped into the stand by Mengi for an Everton throw. Everton have Godfrey on the ball now taking the throw. But in fact, there are two balls on the pitch, so it'll need to be taken again. Godfrey, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young, Gay and Garner, the former uh, Watford loanee, and formerly of Watford just like Ashley Young, and they don't like uh, Watford players past or present here at Kenilworth Road. And Ducore has got the ball here on the edge of the penalty area. He's dinked it into the box towards Garner, who miscued his volley. It should be cleared away by Osho. Luton a little slow to get the ball away. Eventually Osho does hoist it high towards the halfway line. In the wide positions for Everton, Harrison and McNeil and Ducore in support of Calvert-Lewin, who is the lone striker. I'll give you both uh, sets of subs in just a moment as well. But it's two from three to go down. We know that Everton and Brentford are both safe. So it will be only one of Forrest, Luton and Burnley to survive. Forrest away at Sheffield United tomorrow on TalkSport 2 at three. TalkSport 2 has the final day of the championship season at lunchtime. Our base, Ipswich against Huddersfield. Ipswich only need a point to go up, while Birmingham 
Plymouth, Sheffield Wednesday and Blackburn fight for survival and only two of Norwich, West Brom and Hull will be able to confirm their place in the playoffs. Arsenal against Bournemouth at 12.30 tomorrow on Talk Sport. Arsenal can go four points clear at the top. So much live football and there are only 16 days of the Premier League season to go, including this one. Here is Rhys Burke. Midway inside Everton territory, right of centre. Everton sitting rather deep with everybody in grey back behind the ball. Burke scampers in field and finds Barkley. Lift the centre circle, quickly onto the curly head Chong. Chong is up to the corner of the penalty area. Nudges it wide left to Doughty. Doughty taking on both Harrison and Godfrey. They're doubling up on him now. Barkley dinks it in right footed. Headed away by Ashley Young. Did very well there, Young. And he was caught by Carlton Morris. There's a clash of heads, completely accidental. The physios are going to race on. And Ashley Young is the one who's come off worse as a result of that challenge. It was a very brave and courageous diving header. Well, it's not the first time we've said about that sort of crossfield, either ball or cross into the box over the top of Ashley Young. First of all, his positioning was perfect. And then his bravery was brilliant as well. And Carlton Morris trying to get in there has just headed the back of Ashley Young's head. So that, that will be painful. A nice little shake of the hand from Morris on Young. Right? He receives treatment. Nearly four minutes into the second half on Talk Sport. Luton won, Everton won. And this might be lengthy treatment here. They've got to make sure that all the right things are done. And they thought about possibly calling for the stretcher, but I think Young might well be okay to continue here as he sits up Scott Minto alongside me high up on the commentary gantry and Scott we were saying at half time off air Luton really do have to try and pick up a victory tonight because you look at Forrest's fixtures away at Sheffield United and away at Burnley on the final day a home game against Chelsea sandwich in between that and their goal difference is effectively yeah. worth an extra point yeah the goal difference does make a, 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 a big difference as I say, if they are to draw tonight, Luton and, and Forest are to win, I think it's going to be very difficult then. So we talked about having the advantage of playing first. Well, Luton have to take that advantage and they have to somehow find a way to get all three points. You know, we saw Andros Townsend warming up, first of all, with all the subs and then on his own whipping in crosses. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's to come on in the next five or ten minutes. And former Everton man, Andros Townsend. Ashley Young, good to see him back on his feet. And Everton are temporarily down to 10. Young is not being allowed to come on. Luton have got the ball just shy of the halfway line with Burke. 1-1 is the score. Burke has played a lovely ball. Whipped up the far side right channel. Onya Dimmer will get to it. He crosses in. It's headed away by Tarkovsky. From on the corner of the six-yard box, Ashley Young way back onto the field. Luton trying to pile the pressure on Everton. Again, down that right-hand side. And this time they were able to get the ball over the top for Onya Dimmer, who showed great pace. He just wasn't quite able to get it to the far post, which is where Adebayo was. Morris is on the corner of the penalty area now. Back to Barkley. Infield to the middle of the Everton half. And Osho, 25 yards out. Right footed corner! Just beyond the far post. Pickford sprawling. And I think the goalkeeper, Everton's number one, had it covered. But Osho, the centre half, tried to place that into the bottom corner. And he wasn't too far away. Well, he may well have had it covered, Jordan Pickford. And yes, he did. But he was certainly scrambling for it. It was actually a little bit wider from the post than it certainly looked like from where we're standing at the moment. But Pickford dived, he wasn't sure. Sean Dyche is bellowing away on the near side touchline in his tracksuit and he's calling for a couple of Everton subs here. So I think we'll see a couple of changes. Andre Gomez has just been called back towards the dugout on the near side of the field. They're warming up down below our commentary position here, players from both teams. We've had 51 and a half minutes, and it's 1-1. The Luton subs, Shea and Krull, the goalkeepers, Clark, Hashioka, Townsend, Johnson, Berry, Woodrow, and Mpanzu. And for Everton, as Mengi goes back to the Luton goalkeeper, Kaminsky, Virginia, Keane, Onana, Danjuma, Beto, Gomez, Coleman, Chamiti, and Dobbin are the Everton subs. And there's lots of frenetic activity in the Everton dugout at the moment but it's Luton who've got the ball Luton who really need the points tonight Everton already safe and they've won a free kick here Luton 25 yards out left of centre yellow card of the out of the pocket of the referee for Idrissa Gay well again just very much front foot football isn't it from Luton and the way that Chong just picks up the ball low centre of gravity runs with it 
And Gay just dives in, definite foul, definite yellow card and a dangerous position here as well. Well, I've seen Alfie Doughty score fine free kicks before the Charlton man, but it is so far towards the left, it's almost level with the corner of the penalty area. And it's on that left-hand side, so it would be difficult for him to bend it yeah, past not, Pickford from that sort of range. He's not going to shoot from here, but it is going to be a, an interesting ball whipped in. And the Luton players need to make sure that they are on the end of it. Kenilworth Road packed to its 12,000 capacity. The floodlights are shimmering up ahead. The referees made the Everton wall march back the full 10 yards. There are only two players in the wall. Plenty forward in the Luton box. Lots of height and physicality in both sides, it has to be said. Doughty is standing over it. The centre halves are forward. Barkley's there. Adebayo and Morris. Come on, Luton, chart the home fans. 1 1. Dinked in by Doughty. Mengi with a header high over the top. Thunders against the scoreboard behind the goal. And no trouble there for Everton. Well, he made sure he got there. And I'll tell you what. Okay, he's got a Tarkovsky close to him, but it's still a free header. And you want eight yards out, ten yards out? Perhaps it's just a little bit too high for him. He's not able to get over the top of it, but it's a half chance for sure. And now here comes the well, here come the Everton changes. Andre Gomez for Ducore, and it's Onana who is on the near side touchline, and Garner is going to be the man to go off. And on they come. What do you make of the changes made relatively early in the second half by? Sean Dyche Scott yeah I'm surprised in a way that Garner's coming off but Decore hardly seen him in the first half so I think Andre Gomez he just wants a little bit of class to try and get hold of the ball keep the ball and as you said there were passages of play in that first half where Everton looked very very good and I think Sean Dyche wants to get hold of the ball more control of the tempo of the game I think with the likes of Andre Gomez he can certainly do that had quite a disrupted season Onana and Andre Gomez's deal is up at the end of the campaign Everton have possession Tarkovsky will roll it back to goalkeeper Pickford Pickford all in purple hammers it high downfield Calvert-Lewin leaps through the air to try and flick it on but it trickles all the way through to the goalkeeper Kaminsky Luton looking for three wins from three against Everton this season and what would be more importantly just their second win in 15 in the Premier League Luton desperate for two more points in addition to the one that they're already getting as it stands because only a win will take them out of the relegation zone tonight that'd be massive you know, we talked about their, their poor form 10 defeats in 13 one win in 14 since the start of February and I'll tell you what if they were to make it two in 15 wow how would the Kenny be there and then the pressure on Nottingham Forest and Burnley the West Ham away and Fulham to come here for Luton Town and don't rule out Burnley either they have Newcastle at home Tottenham away and Nottingham Forest at home on the final day of the season Burnley Ashley Young for Everton he's midway inside the Luton half he's floated it in high right footed good header away by Osha it's dropped down to Gay Gay flicks the ball wide right to left towards the near side of McNeil headed away by Omnia Dinma that'll go behind for an Everton corner at the Kenilworth Road end of the stadium and suddenly it's quite tense here on a cold and Yes, relatively chilly for early May, Scott Minton. It's amazing the volume levels. It's either one or two or nine or ten, isn't it? <laughs> Depending on whether Luton on the attack or Everton. Either breaking the decibel barrier or incredibly quiet. Andre Gomez takes the corner short, gets it back from Harrison, whips it in, high right footed, that's a good ball. Headed away by Morris though for Luton. And Morris is chasing down his own header. Far side the Luton left, he's still ten yards shy of halfway. He can't burst beyond Tarkovsky who barreled into him. Ashley Young then hammered it out of play. That's a free kick to Luton, just shy of halfway. And the home fans who are sitting on the little benches in the front portion of that main stand are out of their seats to protest. Well, they didn't need to do that. There was two Everton players on one Luton player and they just needed to have a little bit more composure. Tarkovsky clearly didn't want to have a, a race with Carlton Morris and Ashley Young was ready to boot the ball out. And lots of throwbacks to the past around this small but charming ground pillars in quite a few of the stands and it is one of the smallest venues in the Premier League but Luton have loved hosting Premier League football at Kenilworth Road and they're desperate for that to continue 
Pickford has the ball for Everton. We haven't had an hour yet. 57 and a half minutes gone, to be exact. Luton won, Everton won on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent a Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes, so if you've got a plan, they've got a van. Here is Chong racing back into his own half. He steers it to the left back position and doubts it. Under pressure, so goes back to Osho. Osho rolls it to the feet of goalkeeper Kaminsky, who made one excellent save in the first half to prevent an own goal from Mengi. And it's Kaminsky's raking ball high up to the near side, the right. It's going to spin off the turf, which is very slick after the heavy rain we had earlier. And it'll be a throw to Everton that Ashley Young will take. They've got to be a bit cuter when they're trying to get Onyedimi in over the top for, for Ashley Young. Sometimes they're just knocking 50-yard balls, and this time it was from Kaminsky as well. They've got to get a little bit closer, let him come short, and then go in behind. At the moment, it's too easy for Ashley Young. He's not a natural left-back. He's obviously not got the fitness that he used to have either, not the speed. So if they get it right, there's no doubt about it, not just in the air, but on the ground in behind. That can be a vulnerable area for Everton, but Luton just, just forcing it too much. Everton free kick on the halfway line. Pickford will take it. Sean Dyche pointing the way forward, and it's a quick ball by Pickford to Ashley Young. He's five or so yards in front of him. Ashley Young with the ball flighted high up the near side channel. We are right above it almost as Burke dinks the clearance downfield, well controlled by Morris on his chest, inside his own half, and then a looping pass from Lukonga upfield. Adebayo will chase and then Gay and Tarkovsky nearly get in each other's way Tarkovsky smuggles it out to play that was a clumsy disjointed bit of defending from Everton and Luton are hoping to seize on all the little half moments in the match that they can to try and build momentum there's also good pressure from Luton and that's what they're trying to do they're on top at the moment without really troubling Jordan Pickford we need to try and get the goal. 1-1, one, one. Luton from left to right. Barkley, central position, 25 yards out, onto his right foot. Blocked off by Gay as he tried to shoot. Goes out wide instead to Onya Dinma. Deflected right-footed cross, headed away by Branthwaite. A nudge further clear by McNeil, only to the edge of his own penalty area. Everton are confident and controlled in the way that they play the ball out of defence. A little flick by McNeil up to the halfway line and Calvert-Lewin. Good strike play from the number nine. He was crowded out by three orange shirts and was able to buy the free kick. He was clipped by Mengi. Well, it was a great first touch from Calvert-Lewin, you have to say. And then he's come inside one. I think Luton were just trying to hound him down. And then he went down. But that's what good centre-forwards can do. And that's what Everton need to do at the moment. Again, the decibel level has gone back up to 9 and 10. Everything's ebbed and flowed, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. But it's been a great watch. It really has. So just at this moment in time, Everton just need to slow the game down. Luton won it played at a fast pace half an hour plus added time to go long ball by Pickford from a free kick headed square by uh, Tarkovsky and then it was controlled by Barkley who thumps the ball downfield and away from danger Gay is there to retrieve it the tireless Idris again back to Pickford again and it'll be another long ball downfield by the goalkeeper high up the middle to the midway point of the Luton half only half cleared away by Mengi and then another poor header from the Luton centre half it'll drop down to Onana Onana's first touch is not a good one and Luton are able to smuggle it clear up towards the Evertonacious Moritz just shy of the halfway line held it up well and gets the applause of the Luton fans for captain now Chong takes up possession moves into the Everton half out to his left is Osha. Osho, the centre half, is driving in field and he tried to poke it up the inside left channel to Adebayo. Big deflection on that. Luton corner and Kenilworth Road roars its approval. 1 1. Absolutely. And Osho's just trying to get more and more forward. We saw him just, what, five, ten minutes ago have that shot, which had Jordan Peck diving to his left. He's getting forward down. He's won the corner for Luton. I doubt he's placed the ball. Luton fans packed in the stands. Either side of Alfie Doughty. All they need is a good delivery and a thumping header. Doughty trying to provide part number one. Floats it in high, left-footed. Osho coming into the back post. Excellent defensive header from Onana. It'll drop down to Lakonga who crosses. Mengi tried to hook it goalwards, almost scorpion kick style. And then it's driven away downfield by Everton's Dwight McNeil. Andre Gomez with the dark hair has held it up well. And then has given it away in his right back position that's another free kick carelessly given away by Everton Andre Gomez tussling with Doughty committing a foul and a free kick to Luton now a yard or so in field from the left hand touchline deep into the Everton half can Everton continue to stand up to this aerial bombardment 
It's all about the quality of the cross, isn't it? Well done to Alfie Doughty to winning the ball back and then winning the free kick as well. When they're in this position and they are on top, you really have to make one of these counts. Doughty again, number 45 on the back of his orange shirt. Couple of steps back as he prepares to whip in the free kick. A goal here takes Luton out of the bottom three. Doughty delivers left footed, headed away by Onana again. Everton wants more deal with the threat and Harrison will steer the ball upfield but Luton are having a good spell all of a sudden Kaminsky the goalkeeper's got the ball centre circle under a little bit of pressure from Calvert-Lewin only token pressure really Lukonga is able to send it cross field high right to left hoisted up into the Everton half and Harrison is there on the cover to roll it back to Pickford these are two of the more direct teams in the Premier League that is borne out by the stats 63 minutes gone Luton 1 Everton 1 live on Talk Sport Bolton have got a third away at Barnsley in the League One playoff semi-final first leg. They lead 3-1 in stoppage time there. Randall Williams with the goal for Bolton. Talk Sport 2 will bring you the closing stages of that. You can swipe between Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 if you download our app. It's free and easy to download. And don't forget, the network is the home of the EFL playoffs. It's the only place you can hear exclusive commentaries of the semi-finals and the playoff finals. Well, he doesn't want to be back there, but great defending from Monja Dinma on Calvert-Lewin, who held the ball up really well, but he was pulling his shirt from what looked like could have been a half an opportunity for Everton. Now it's Luton putting the pressure back on the away side. Sean Dyche and Ian Wone in conversation at the moment on the near side touchline as Everton dinked the ball high into the Luton half. Header away by Osho under pressure from Andre Gomez. He was caught, says the referee, Tim Robinson, and that's a free kick to Luton about five yards prior to the halfway line there seems to be constant hustle and bustle on the touchline but no further changes upcoming just yet I don't think and no change to the score it's a bit scrappy at the moment the game as Chong looks to dart upfield inside left channel past two and three in grey and he whips in the cross and he's ballooned it behind via deflection off Godfrey it's a corner to Luton a really good direct play and, and you're right actually the first, in terms of quality the second half doesn't match the first half but you know as you get closer and closer to that 90 minute mark Luton will have to force it the fans will step it up even more as well and then that might be an opportunity for Everton still feel there's a, a twist or two left in this game and still 25 minutes exactly to go plus added time Doughty again the man for the set pieces particularly from the left side this will be an outswinger. The corner in front of the Luton fans. It's 1-1. Doughty whips it in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Hit it away by Tarkovsky this time. The giant Tarkovsky. Chong does brilliantly. On the slide to steer it back up wide to Doughty again. Barkley's header. Instinctive at the near post. Way over the top. Yes. I have to say Everton have defended the set pieces absolutely brilliantly. But when the ball comes back out to Alfie Doughty and he whips the ball in. It's a free header for Ross Barkley. The problem is he's kind of in front of the near post. He's also having to come back a little bit. It's a difficult header, it really is. But they're knocking on the door, Luton, aren't they? Suddenly seeing more of the ball. And more territorially as well, Luton Town. Kaminsky hasn't had a save to make in the second half as yet. No, they've done really well. They've stepped it up in the second half. And I'm sure that's what Rob Edwards said. Come on, we need to find a way to win this game. We've been looking to our right, which is where most of the players have been. Alfie Doughty darts into the area. Good tackle, tackling back by Jack Harrison. Really diligent defending that. Thought for a second he was beaten for pace after the long high ball downfield. Found Doughty, took it in his stride, was about to bear down on goal. Harrison whipped it away from him. It's another Luton corner, their fourth of the game. And you know what? That's such an important tackle because he's inside the box and he's stretching. If he misses it, he brings him down. It's a penalty. Everton make a change. Seamus Coleman, the club captain, on in place of Ashley Young, who takes a long walk out towards the near side of the field. And again, the, the boos from the Luton fans, the former Watford player, who did take a knock in the first half, uh, earlier in the second half, rather, and sees his evening end early. Now, I, I don't know if that's purely tactical or because Ashley Young's not feeling 100%, but... An excellent player, obviously, Seamus Coleman, but the principle's the same. We'll see whether he plays left back or not. You can still put that ball to the far post. The aerial... He's no taller than Ashley Young. No, that's a good point. Good point. The aerial threat is starting to increase here for Luton. Into the final quarter of the game we go. 
Referee is just having to sort out some tussling in the penalty area. Morris and Osho were among those involved. Seamus Coleman too, having immediately come into the game and getting himself involved. Godfrey and Andre Gomez are trying to do their defending for Everton as well. Everybody back for Everton. In fact, everybody inside the Everton half, bar Luton goalkeeper Thomas Kaminsky. 1-1 it remains. Doughty's delivery out swinging again. And Morris with the header, but it's glancing wide. It'll stay in play. Kept in play by Anana. At first look, that looked like it could really trouble pick with the header from Carlton Morris. But Everton are on the break now. Harrison, who's got decent pace, brought down from behind by Barkley. Free kick to Everton. Well, it was one of those that, <laughs> from where we're standing, it looked like it was going to go in at the far post. But it was a... He needed someone to come in from the far post and use that as a flick-on. The Luton players weren't quite ready for that one. There's a flying header by Morris, almost right along the six-yard line where we thought it might nestle into the near corner. It wouldn't even gone for a corner to the corner <laughs> that's flag. That's it, that's <laughs> it. It's finished, Barnsley 1, Bolton 3 in the League 1 playoff semi-final first leg. Here is Anana on the edge of the penalty area for Everton. And a little tee back by Calvert-Lewin towards Harrison, who's almost forced his way through! Looping effort! What a save by Kaminsky! Left-footed on the half volley there, Jack Harrison took a massive deflection. Kaminsky saw it heading to the top corner. He backpedalled, he clawed it away. What a save! Yeah, absolutely. And he wasn't quite sure whether it was going in. Well, I think it was. It was curling in, certainly probably going to hit the post, and then who knows what would have happened after that. But that is a brilliant save from the Luton goalkeeper. Now can Everton threaten from the set play? They love doing that. McNeil's delivery out swinging. Flicked header, skimmed away off the head of Carlton Morris. It's come back out to the Everton right, the far side. Harrison one-on-one -on -one with Osho. Deflected cross, turned goal was by Anana and blocked. And now Luton on the counter. 20 minutes to go. And it's chomp. He's run 40 yards up the far side left touch line and he's darted in between the two Everton defenders. He slipped and then he wins it back, left on edge of the area, away from Tarkovsky. Oh, and then Chong and Doughty wait for each other to control it. Chong pokes it against the left boot of Doughty and it's gone behind for a goal kick. But the Luton fans, they're all on their feet for Tahith Chong. And even if Luton go down, what a season it's been as they make their first change. Paulie Woodrow, who has scored against Everton this season, a late winner in the FA Cup, on in place of Fred Onyadidna, so maybe there'll be a little bit of shuffling around positionally. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Could have put Townsend on, almost like for like. Looks like Chong's going to come out here to the right-hand side now. Interesting from Rob Edwards. Had options. Decided to go for Woodrow. Well, it's an attacking change. Woodrow is a, is a striker, really slash forward player and he's playing out on the left of the three at the moment with Adebayo down the middle less than 20 minutes remain so Luton as it stands would be inside the relegation zone behind Nottingham Forest on goal difference Forest would have the chance to go three points clear of them if they win at Sheffield United tomorrow on Talk Sport 2 it is really crunch time in the season Luton have got only two games left after this one. Chong darting up the inside right channel again. Burke will try and head forward to meet the, reach the ball. Aimed along the line of the penalty area, but he can't get to it. And it's gone out for a goal kick. Yeah, well, he's overplayed that, hasn't he? I think Usain Bolt might have struggled to get that one. <laughs> but, you know, it's very much Luton on the front foot, you have to say. I, I do think it's interesting. He's not done like for like out on the wing. And just Townsend could have come on and whip those balls in from one side Doughty on the other we know that with Morris and Adebayo as well they're so good in the air but decided to go for Woodrow who's, as you say is more of a more of a striker we've got key Premier League games over the weekend Arsenal the league leaders against Bournemouth tomorrow Crystal Palace against Manchester United on Monday we've got the WSL's two remaining title contenders Manchester City the favourites but Chelsea still mathematically hopeful they'll both play their respective matches live on Talk Sport 2. Manchester City at home to Arsenal and Chelsea at home to Bristol City on Sunday. Pickford's long ball down the middle. It could reach Calvert Lewin here. It bounced in between two of the three centre halves, but Kaminsky was able to claim. And of course, we've got the final day of the championship season tomorrow, live from promotion chasing Ipswich against Huddersfield. And the scrap for relegation and the playoffs far from over. 
in that division as well. Final day of the championship season to come tomorrow. Here goes Barkley, surging through the Middle East beyond Onana. Heavy touch from Tarkovsky. Then he stuck out a long leg to wriggle the ball away from the feet of Adebayo. He did brilliantly to win it back. Then a firm but fair challenge on Doughty, uh, from Doughty on Harrison. And Luton regained possession. It's a real battle now here. And can Luton carve out the one chance that they really need to turn this into a great night under the lights for them. Oh, it'd be a sensational night for them if they were to somehow find a winner here. That was really important tackle from Tarkovsky. So if he had a missed time that, it would have brought Adebayo down or Adebayo would have been through on goal. Now a tangle between Morris and Branthwaite. There's Chong plays the ball through the middle towards Woodrow. Again, just over hit. A little too eager, maybe, Chong. Woodrow couldn't reach it. It's gone through to Pickford. Yeah, do you know what? He's quick. He's tenacious. He's skillful. But just that composure that's needed, just as about you play that, that final pass, not quite there. And they've given it away. Luton, Calvert-Lewin on the attack, trying to dart towards the edge of the penalty area, but his pass is a poor one. Barkley against his old club has got it back again. Midway inside his own half of the field under pressure from uh, Idris Gay and has to lay it square to Mengi on the edge of the area. Ross Barkley, who started his career at Everton, joined the club at the age of 11. Here he is in a Luton Town shirt, trying to help keep them in the Premier League. 1-1, good noise from the Everton supporters. A long way to our right. Now Lekonga in the centre circle. Square ball to Osho. Osho over the halfway line. A lot of jeopardy in the season, a lot of jeopardy in the game tonight. Wide from Osho to the left, and Corley Woodrow. Woodrow's got Doughty hugging the touchline on his outside. Little nudge infield to Adebayo. He's darted between the two centre-halves, but he can't get beyond the retreating Coleman. And the ball will be floated upfield by Gay. Not very far, though. Calvert-Lewin couldn't get it under control. Relatively ineffective Calvert-Lewin in this second half so far. Again, Sean Dyche and Ian Wone in conversation on the near side touchline. Rob Edwards, the Luton boss, watches with his arms folded as Osho strides forward into the area, dinks it in high towards Arabeo. The header away by Brantwaite. You can sense that Luton team and fans feel the urgency about their situation now. Of course, nothing decided tonight necessarily, but Adebayo has peeled away down the left and he's won a corner off Tarkovsky. They know how important it is, Scott, because they can't be relegated. Of course they can't tonight, but they really, really would love a win with 15 minutes left. Absolutely. I mean, from Everton's point of view, it's professional pride, isn't it? It doesn't really matter to them. For Luton, you can feel it all around the ground. They will not give up to the final whistle. Again, set pieces have been so important for them this season. Can they do a, a brilliant header, a brilliant set piece here to find a winner? There is a quarter of an hour remaining at Kenilworth Road, a very crowded penalty box, a particularly crowded six-yard area here. Orange shirts are lining up to meet the delivery of Alfie Doughty. Left-footed, headed only half away. It'll drop down to Barkley. The shot is blocked. Everton scramble it clear. Andre Gomez has got enough on the 50-50 with Doughty to send the ball spiralling into this Bobber's stand seats. And now what's the referee doing here? He's signalling that it's a Luton throw and I think he was saying Chong can't go any further forward than he did. And he's from midway inside the Everton half as he gets it back from Reese Burke. It remains Luton 1, Everton 1. And Ladbrokes have the latest odds. Right now, Luton 13-5, Everton 16-5. And the draw as Branthwaite heads it back to Pickford at 4-5. to five. That's all thanks to Labbrokes, 18+. plus. Be gamble aware.org. It's, I suppose, there has been jeopardy in the whole game across the 76 minutes, Scott. It, you, you can't really necessarily call it either way because Everton have still got the quality to get themselves a goal. No, they certainly have, and they were slightly better side in the first half, but you have to say, been poor in the second. Calvert-Lewin's kept the ball in play on the dead ball line. He's now into the area. He's nudged it infield towards Andre Gomez. Poor clearance, only as far as Harrison. Deep cross, McNeil looping header. Calvert-Lewin climbs! Great save, Kaminsky again! Calvert-Lewin from point-black range, and Kaminsky with an acrobatic flying stop. How important has he been to Luton this season, Kaminsky? Another great save, great reflexes, but it's straight at him. You know, and McNeil heads the ball back. It's a good leap from Calvert-Lewin. And he gets above the Luton defender, but a yard either side. Kaminsky's has got no chance whatsoever. Still a very, very good save, but what a wonderful opportunity for the Everton centre-forward. Luton switched off 
They don't want to switch off from the corner. Taken by McNeil. Headed away. Drops down to Harrison edge of the box. Hits it on the volley and blocks. Crowd of players between Harrison and the goal. Morris again was one of them. And Harrison's got to retrieve possession. Midway inside the Luton half. He's bundled over. Lukonga and Chong. He was sandwiched in between them. Luton fans are furious, but it is an Everton free kick. It's the first time in a long time that Everton have had control of the ball in Luton's half. You know, they've just been defending, so concentrated on defending. They've just been kicking the ball out, giving Calvert-Lewin no quality ball up, up front at all. He's been able to flick it on, do nothing more, and Luton get the ball back. But just in the last minute or so, Everton now, again, we talk about slowing the game down, calming the crowd down. This is what they need to do. 12 minutes remain now on Talk Sport, a Friday night thriller. We've got commentaries on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. All on the bank holiday weekend. All on the network. Free kick by McNeil. Whips it in. Reverse ball left footed. Controlled by Calvert Lewin in the penalty area. Can't find a teammate. Again, there's a nerviness about the Luton defending. Barkley, too many touches, and then had to just chip the ball out of play for an Everton throw. And there's composure, and then there's composure. And he, as he did that, <laughs> that kind of turn in the box with two Everton players around him, he realised, I can't lose the ball now. So he's he kicked it out and did the right thing, made the right decision. Double change for Everton now. Here comes Beto, who is back. Uh, welcome to see him back after concussion. On for Calvert-Lewin. And then the other change. I think Gay's number is up here. And it'll be Yusuf Chamiti, who did start in the Premier League for the first time against uh, Brentford last weekend. So that's the, the double change here for Everton. Well, that's interesting, putting on two forwards yep well it tells you what Sean Dyche is thinking they thinking why not still go for it Gay has been yellow carded and meanwhile continuing the connections between the two clubs as Luton make that double change they're screaming here Rob Edwards and his staff to get Adebayo off <laughs> having scored the equaliser in the first half on his first start since February and here comes Andros Townsend against his old team well, I had a buyer who wanted to say thank you to the fans. Rob Edwards, no, 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 no. You come off here now. We want to keep this high tempo up. Well, they've only got just over 10 minutes to try and find a winning goal. Back it goes to Pickford. The Everton goalkeeper's clearance is high up into the night sky. And it's steered out of play on the volley by La Conga. Both teams have put a heck of a lot of effort into the game, Scott, haven't they? Yeah, I know, absolutely. You know, certainly Luton have to. But even Everton, the way they've, they've dealt with... You know, Luton's pressing and high intensity. Barkley is trying to force his way beyond two in grey. He's done well to hold off both Onana and Andre Gomez. And now Woodrow looking to tear up the left. On his overlap is Doughty. Far side the left wing position. Doughty all left foot trying to take on Coleman. Blocked off by Coleman. Very experienced, of course. It'll be dinked upfield by Harrison to Beto. Beto, the big striker, holds it up well. Can be a threat off the bench for Everton. We've seen that in terms of where his goals have come from since joining the club. And that'll be a throw to Everton on the halfway line in front of the, the main stand with its various pillars, the old gantry that isn't in use anymore. Big floodlight pylons sticking through the roof. Everton throw, which Coleman will take. I'm surprised Adebayo has come off, though. He's already scored today. You know, maybe he's not quite 100% fit. But starting him was a, a big, big bonus. He's got the goal. Maybe that was always in the plan, not to, to quite do 90 minutes, but we could have done with him on the pitch. Chamiti has controlled a long ball well. Corner of the area for Everton. Good running by the substitute. Can he cut inside Osho? Osho stands him up at least for now. Chamiti down by the dead ball line. He's peeled it back to the feet of Coleman. First time cross. Oh, slice off. Doughty and the goalkeeper claims it high above Beto. I just wonder with the changes, Scott, you mentioned why has Adebayo come off. Maybe the thinking is that Morris can be the focal point and Woodrow and Townsend have that, that speed and that ability to play as, as sort of nippy wingers just in behind Morris. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I mean, Townsend's coming inside and Chong's still playing sort of wide right. But, you know, I, I just think Adebayo, I, again, I, I think it's a fitness thing. I, I think he's, you know, we know he only came on in the 88th minute in the last game. He's been out for some games, but you know, if he's fit and firing and you need a goal, you want him on the pitch. Him or Morris, who is still on the field. Lukonga, midway inside the Everton half. 
The square ball to his left, and now he gets it back from Barkley in a slightly more advanced position, corner of the area, taking on Andre Gomez. Little back heel now, Doughty's cross hit it away. Comes out to Barkley from 35 yards, and a stinging drive on the half volley that is gathered by Pickford. Great strike, wasn't it? As the ball came to him, chested it down, only one thing in his mind. What was he, 30 yards out? It's a great strike. And straight at Jordan Pickford. Too clash, casual Pickford with his clearance, meanwhile. Luton have picked up the ball again. And suddenly, Everton are retreating further and further backwards. The ball is with Lekonga. Five yards to the edge of the box. Lekonga has whipped it crossfield towards the right. Intercepted by uh, McNeil, tracking back for Everton. And then good work by Chimiti to win it off Burke and leave Burke out of the pitch. And a good ball up the left-hand channel by Chimiti to Beto. Beto corner of the area. One-on-one. One. Beto wrestled to the ground by Osho. That has to be a shout for a penalty. Everton appeal. Sean Dyche, likewise, right behind the fourth official. It'll be fascinating to take a look at that one again on our little monitors in the commentary position. Luton not happy with Beto, but was that a foul, Scott Minter? No, I, I, listen, I, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. I'm thinking, Osha, whatever you do, just stand him up. Don't let him get inside you. I mean, you can say, if anything, it's the other way around. I think that's a good refereeing now. Just let it go. Two players having a tussle, having a bit of a tug on each. A good decision to make a non-decision. <laughs> and the on-field referee did it. Would Hooray! you believe it? Would you believe it? VAR didn't get involved. 84th minute, Luton 1, Everton 1. So Luton staying in the bottom three as it stands. Darting down the middle for Everton is Anana. Great run, gets it back from Beto. Good close control. Beto edge of the D. Everton look lively. Here is Chamiti. Through towards Beto. Cleared away. Just in the nick of time by Woodrow. Have to say the two changes... The two forwards coming on, Chimiti and Beto, instant impact. Yeah, the two of them are playing together. I think Cal Dominic Calvert-Lewin would probably say, well, I would have liked to partner alongside me, but the two of them playing together are going to be even more direct. Certainly looking better, Everton. These could be some defining minutes in Luton's season here. Morris, <laughs> midway inside the Everton half. He's played it to his left and Woodrow. Woodrow, infield towards Morris again, back to goal. And he's being wrestled away from goal by Tarkovsky he's held him off he's gone to ground referee plays the advantage because the ball was at the feet of Lekonga Morris gets up and he's got to get back towards the edge of the penalty area now Barkley to Woodrow infield 30 yards out and a looping effort that is over the top and I'm sure Pickford would have had that covered anyway yeah I'm thinking don't shoot from there it's got to be a wonder strike an absolute worldie to score from there just keep playing keep trying to open Everton up keep passing the ball have that composure. Woodrow. So, no, that's, that, that's, that's, that's one goal in 30, 40 shots. Yeah, you're right. He does like a late goal, though. Scored one against Everton in the FA Cup. It, that was very late, wasn't it? 96 minutes. So 1-1 one, one on Talk Sport with Now. Don't forget that with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action, including Luton against Everton live right now and contract free with an hour membership. Search now sports. Forward by Branthway. High up the left-hand touchline towards Chimiti. And Osho as well to shepherd the ball behind for a goal kick. The urgency from Luton is there. Can't question the endeavour. No, you can't. I have to say Everton haven't been on it quite as much as, as you can expect. But defensively, they have been very good indeed. Both managers on the edge of their respective technical areas, almost side by side. Here is Lokonga, edge of his own box, got to be careful here. There uh, may be nerves for some of the Luton players, they know that a mistake and a defeat is almost unthinkable at this point. Here is Godfrey on the halfway line, it's 1-1. McNeil peeling away to the near side of the field, he's right below our commentary position and he's run the ball out of play. And that's how tight this could be, Scott Wright, because if they win it, they go two points clear of Forrest. If they lose it, they're a point behind them and Forrest would have the chance to go four clear if they beat Sheffield United on TalkSport 2 tomorrow. We won't know until tomorrow whether this is a good point or not, if it ends up this way. But you would think that Forrest will get at least a point. They have to gain on Forrest. You know, because they've got a, they're a point ahead, they've also got the goal difference. We don't know what's going to happen whether on the appeal, whether they'll get some points back. That's why it all points towards Luton needing three points this evening. Luke Berry. A man who's been at Luton since their League One days, on in place of Tahit Chong. And 
some more noise from the Luton fans in support of Luke Berry. One or two heading for the exits. Three minutes plus stoppage time to go. Header out of play by Godfrey. Going down is the chant of the Everton fans. Here is Burke scooping it high towards the edge of the box. Away by Branthwaite up into the air. Little flick by Chimiti and Onana. Forward now to Beto. Trying to hold it up on halfway, but Mengi's there to win it back for Luton, the centre-half. Then a ball sent flying up the right wing. Touchline by Burke. And Berry battling hard to try and do something with it. I think he was trying to slide it and maybe win a deflection off an Everton player, but it is... The goal kick to Everton, who are safe and have had quite a renaissance over recent weeks. They certainly have. But, you know, you go back to that FA Cup game with the 96th minute winner. And we'll have to wait and see how many minutes are, are put up on the boards as we as we enter the 90th minute. And Luton will give it all right to the very end. And if it comes up again like five or six minutes, there'll be a massive cheer around here. There'll still be plenty of time to create that one chance needed. Pickford has stopped the ball downfield. 90 seconds of normal time left. Luton 1, Everton 1, it remains here. Bicycle kick from Branthwaite, who was fouled by Morris. We're told there'll be six added minutes upcoming at the end of the game. Wait for the cheer. Yes, we've got about 90 seconds to build up to that now. Our producer knows it all. He decides it. <laughs> right then, free kick to Everton. On the halfway line, Luton have brought everybody back here to defend this. Again, maybe a sign that they know that possibly a point isn't a bad point tonight. Forward by Pickford. High, deep into the penalty area now. Tarkovsky trying to win the header. Luton scrambling away. Further forward by Laconga, who's being held by Branthwaite. Free kick to Luton on the edge of their own box. And now, the urgency back again as they scamper to try and get the ball forward. Yeah, it's a bit silly for Everton just committing a foul that they didn't need to give the ball back to Luton. Kaminsky's just saying to his defenders, get up. Come on, let's get it in there. It's Kaminsky. Long clearance pinged up the middle. High towards Morris. Morris has flicked it on. Almost found Woodrow. Cleared away by Coleman in the right back position for Everton. Looks solid since coming on. And Coleman with a high raking ball upfield over the top of the halfway line. And that's a tug of the shirt by Beto on Osho this time. Luton take the free kick quickly. 15 seconds of normal time to go. We're expecting six to be the number on the electronic board of the fourth official to our right. Here is Osho on the halfway line and Doughty back to his goalkeeper. Up it comes, six added minutes. There's the roar for Luton fans. Mengi shuffles over halfway. Woodruff, ten yards into the Everton half. Playing from left to right here, Luton Town. The goal takes them out of the Premier League's bottom three and they'd have two games left of course Nottingham Forest and Burnley would both have a game in hand forward by Doughty swinging ball from left to right off balance easily headed away by Godfrey but then a touch out of play by McNeil Rob Edwards almost ended up on the Everton bench there he had to race to try and get the ball because he wanted them to take the throw quickly 40 seconds with the six added Scott Minto 1-1 good bit of goalkeeping for Rob Edwards wasn't that Mm -hmm. have to say he wants to just keep it in cushion header to Woodrow corner of the area shot is blocked by Tarkovsky and the ball has rebounded to McNeil McNeil brings it down in the left back position going back towards his own goal Pickford's clearance isn't a great one he's out of his goal controlled by Burke Pickford back in goal forward by Laconga cleared away by Branthwaite high to halfway a minute of the six added has been played Chimiti that's surely a foul by Osho in the centre circle it had to be it was all over it and that is a free kick to Everton. No, oh, I actually thought there was a foul firstly Osho, uh, on Osho by Chimiti. That wasn't seen, and then by the time Chimiti got his body around the ball, Osho's brought him down. And this is not something that Luton fans will want. This would be a very good point for Everton, given the circumstances, how badly Luton need all three. So they will take their time. It's Luton. They will want to try and get this game going as quickly as possible again. Win the ball back and see if they can create a chance. Haven't been able to do that, have they, in the last few minutes? Very central, this free kick. Coleman's come across to play it square to McNeil. Bit more angle on the delivery. High into the area. That's an important header by Woodrow. Skimmed off his head. Everton corner. Two of the six added minutes have been played. We're at the very end of the game now. Fifth corner for Everton. 
and Luton well defeat here would be unthinkable yeah no one's in a rush either are they to, to go over it's Dwight McNeil who's just jogging over there very slowly and going into a walk now again they'd take a point considering the circumstances for sure Dwight, can they nick all three well Dwight McNeil will take the corner Kenilworth Road end has gone very quiet now Luton have brought everybody back McNeil and the corner will be taken again the referee has spotted something before it was taken it was whipped right along the edge of the six yard line the delivery from McNeil was very good and now there are two balls on the pitch and Luton are in a rush here they're trying to get the other ball off the field Woodrow's done that we're nearly halfway through six added Luton are desperate to win this you can tell that by the body language Andre Gomez has just got a yellow card because he took too long getting rid of the spare ball maybe and now he's trying to make his still point the to the referee it is still on the pitch somehow it's come back on Townsend eventually rolls it off a slightly farcical moment McNeil will take the corner the situation remains the same 1-1 one, one. can Everson win it right at the end here whipped in by McNeil right underneath the crossbar headed away by Morris it'll drop down to Andre Gomez on the half one he steers it back in Tarkovsky couldn't reach it Burke on the break forward towards Barkley what's he got left in the tank Coleman gets across to beat him to it and he'll roll it all the way back to Jordan Pickford there are only two and a half minutes to go here Pickford clears high and long. And that's a foul on the Conga by Chamiti. Jumping. Free kick Luton. Right back position. They're going to leave it to Kaminsky. Everybody's going to be way forward here for Luton now. Get it up there. That's what they're looking to do. Forget about the passing now. Minutes away. Can they somehow find the winner that could be absolutely crucial to their season and staying up in the Premier League? Kaminsky. Long for Luton. High towards the edge of the Everton penalty area. Good header away. It'll drop down to the centre circle. Mengi's clearance hits Chimiti. Got lucky. Rebounded back to Mengi. Mengi 10 yards the edge of the area. He's drilled in a low shot. Pickford will go down and gather it. A minute and 40 seconds left. And it's Luton 1, Everton 1. Now again, don't shoot from there. You're 25 yards out. You're a centre half. You're not going to stick that in the top corner and beat England's number one. Pickford's fuming with himself in enigmatic fashion because he's giving it away. Kaminsky punts it long downfield, headed away by Tarkovsky. What a battle it's been between Tarkovsky and Morris. Now Chamiti can't get away from Lakonga, who's been excellent tonight, Lakonga, in the middle of midfield. And he's taken the throw for Luton. He sent it square to Barkley. He's had injury problems, Lakonga, this season at times. Now over the halfway line goes Rhys Burke into the final minute. Burke's diagonal ball, headed away by Coleman. It's all out attack now for Luton here and that leaves them vulnerable. Everton have got four on three. Andre Gomez, his pass is poor. Luton win it back. Barkley summons up the energy to race back into his own half. 50 seconds to go. Luton won, Everton won. On tonight, it's all on the next few seconds here for Luton now. They can get themselves out of the bottom three with a late, late, late winner here. Barkley, cross field, good ball. Corley Woodrow brings it down. How's the cross? Luke Berry's header, pushed away by Pickford. Well, it looked a simpler save than that, but Pickford pushed it behind. Corner, is Kaminsky coming forward? Kaminsky is being sent forward here at 1-1. You know it's desperate times, desperate measures when your keeper goes up great play from Ross Barkley instead of just trying to have a shot or trying to ping it in from straight he went it out wide cross came in Pickford made more of that than he should have done really Kaminsky's in the box we have had 96 minutes on Talk Sports it's 1-1 is it all set up for a dramatic late winner here Doubting delivers high to the back post Mengi was jumping the bicycle kick is deflected over Berry again the substitute sees his effort blocked. Luton have just enough time. One more corner. What? One last chance. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure Jordan Pickford would have got there. That's an amazing block, that is. That's so unlucky from Luke Berry. Even more unbelievably, Kaminsky stays forward. The goalkeeper's in the area. It's 1-1. Doubting delivers it in, headed away. And Luton have no goalkeeper. Look, Conga's got to be careful. He's cushioned the header out wide. It'll be a free kick. He was fouled by Chamiti. 97 minutes, still no whistle. Incredible drama from the Premier League again. I'll send Kaminsky back now. I mean, a point is a point, even if they don't get all three. 
There's no point in giving it away if Everton do go on the counter-attack, but Everton's defending of the balls coming in. The two centre-halves in particular. And James Tarkovsky has just... He's been an absolute leader out there. The free kick. Midway inside the Luton half, to the left of centre. Alfie Doughty, one more time, he places it down. A sea of orange shirts forward here. Can one of them get the header in? Doughty's delivery, and it's headed away to Townsend! Off the line! Brentwaite is there! My goodness, Luton were close! And the game is over. It finishes 1-1 and there are afters on the halfway line. Andros Townsend, so close to winning it right at the end. The assistants have come onto the field. Now is the game over? They've come onto the field here to possibly try and calm down what was happening in the immediate aftermath. And I think the whistle has gone and it has finished here 1-1 as both sets of players go head to head right at the end Luton and Everton have battled out a one all draw and it's over to Nottingham Forest tomorrow afternoon on TalkSport 2 for the latest instalment in what is turning into a gripping relegation battle in the Premier League for Luton a draw it may feel like a defeat they gain a point on their relegation rivals but they fail to move out of the bottom three and right at the end, Andros Townsend drilled it goalwards and only the outstretched right boot of Jared Branthwaite denied Luton the opportunity to move out of the bottom three. Both goals came in the first half. Calvin Lewin with the penalty kick. The equalise from Adebayo. Loud boos. Furious Luton fans rage at the referee and the officials as they leave the field. Some of the fans are thumping the edge of the tunnel but it has finished on a night where Luton seemingly felt they had to win they can only pick up a point and the pendulum swings in the relegation battle possibly in favour of Nottingham Forest in particular 98 gripping minutes Luton won Everton won they gave it just about everything Luton down they had 18 shots in the game possession incredibly equal Luton 50.4% 50.4 a 49.6 for Everton the fans were furious and you know what if there were two more minutes in that game Luton Town would have won it they were pouring on the pressure it just wasn't to be and the question their fans now ask is that it is that the nail in the coffin for Luton's fading hopes of staying in the Premier League. It means due to their inferior goal difference that if Nottingham Forest can win at Sheffield United live on TalkSport 2, 3 p.m. tomorrow, that Luton will need four points from their final two matches to stay in the top flight. They stay in the relegation zone, level on points with Forest, but nine goals worse off. Burnley two points behind Luton now. Luton needed all three points tonight and as usual they covered every blade of grass, gave absolutely everything but they failed to win. It was good but not good enough. Scott Minto. Yeah, do you know what? They gave everything and, and, and they're doing a, a lap of appreciation. I won't call it a lap of honour but the fans here have seen their team give 100% for them and the fans have given 100% for their team. This is a club that whatever happens to you, whether they go down or whether they stay up, you know, there's not many more united clubs than there are than this one right now. I was going to say, it does not feel like a, a stadium that has likely seen their team relegated this evening. Of course, it's not official, but there's now a mountain for no, them to no, climb. No, no, absolutely. But we'll find out tomorrow whether it's a good point or not. And you're right, you know, Nottingham Forest against bottom club Sheffield United, you'd expect them to get at least another point, And you do feel Luton needed to gain something on them. But, but, but I'm just reflecting on the positive mood here. No, you know, absolutely. There are many clubs who would have booed their team off in a must-win game to stay in this division. I know Luton, Town's feel, Luton Town fans feel they are punching above their weight just being in the Premier League. Other clubs maybe would feel differently. However, you see the togetherness at this football club right now. 
look, a decade ago they were in they weren't even in the EFL you know so they've come so far Luton Town and they, and they appreciate what the what this club is all about no absolutely they're, they're giving them a, a round of applause a big round of applause and rightly so because they gave it everything and if Luton Town do go down it won't be for the lack of trying or the want or, or the effort it would just be that lack of quality which we're talking about Luton Town in the Premier League it's an amazing achievement for them to be here and it's an amazing achievement for them to be fighting right to the end of the season it's still not over Hugh I know it's still not over they're in the relegation zone on goal difference on goal difference now the reports were when they came up to the Premier League the promotion was worth up to £250 million for them we know the hierarchy here said that money would be ploughed into the building of their new stadium to put the club in a better position for the long term but maybe and I'm not saying they should have spent more on players but maybe that will be the difference between them staying in the Premier League and not it would have been too much of a gamble and Luton Town have seen too much in over the last few decades to to gamble on something like that no they absolutely made the right decision and even if they do go down look I, I was one of many that thought that they would be well down by now and they're not and they're fighting they're still in with a chance so that there's no doubt at all but no, it was completely the right decision not to put all your eggs in the players' basket. You know, you, you could have had a situation of QPR a few years ago and lots of big clubs that have gone down and then gone down again. And Luton Town have done just that. So it's absolutely the right decision not to do it. They are fighting for their lives right now and they're still not out of this because we'll wait and see what happens tomorrow and then they've got games. If they can get it to the end of the season and still have a chance, Fulham at home, I fancy them to win that. We'll have to wait and see what happens with the other clubs now, but Nottingham Forest in, in, in particular, to see whether they get all three points against Sheffield United. And then Chelsea, they've got Chelsea at home. You know, we, know, we don't know what we get with Chelsea, so a, they could easily go to the City ground and win. A massive game as well then at home to Burnley on the final day. Burnley home to Newcastle this weekend. Spurs away before they face Forest. Uh, Luton have West Ham away, and then you mentioned Fulham at home on the final day. Not long to go at all, but it feels like there could still be plenty of twists and turns. And, of course, we await the result of Nottingham Forest's appeal against their four-point deduction. Could it be increased? Could it be reduced? And what would that mean for the bottom of the table? By the way, that's a disgrace. We're still waiting for that. How can we be waiting for that with what will be two games to go? I mean, it's outrageous, in in my opinion. That should have been sorted a, a long time ago. We want it to be sorted out on the pitch and okay, if you if you do the go over the PSR, then fine. You you have to take the the deduction, whatever that is, with it. But make the decision earlier than what it is at the moment. Don't leave it to the penultimate game, or it could even be the last game of the season. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I think it's disgraceful. The big question for you tonight on Talksport is simply who is going down, Luton Town fans. How proud are you of your side? And in fact, we got an answer as to whether Everton were putting their feet up and were on the beach. The way they celebrated keeping Luton Town out at the end of that game shows they are still playing for that badge right now, having survived in the Premier League last uh, weekend. Yeah, absolutely. It's professional pride, isn't it? Oh, they would have celebrated and they would have celebrated big time. And <laughs> Maybe the first 10 minutes they were still trying to get their feet going. But no, no, no. They came back into the game in the first half. I thought they were very good. Um, from then on but up until half time second half I thought Luton were the better side and it was almost a question of attack v defence at times and can Everton find a way on a counter attack didn't give quality ball up to Dominic Calvert-Lewin at all but defensively as what we've been saying for a very long time and the reason why they are staying up they were absolutely superb tonight Give us a call, 03717 Sports Bar Weekender is on the way. Adam Cattrall and Carlton Cole are with you this evening. Before you leave me, Scott Minto, it's time for us to pick our Man of the Match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Man of the Match on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. So, Scott, who have you gone for? Look, there were, there were some fantastic Luton performances, there, there, there really were, but I feel a bit guilty doing this, but I'm going to give it to an Everton player just because of the, I would talk about how much they were under pressure defensively. The two centre-halves, great, but I've got to give it to James Tarkovsky. Absolutely fantastic. Here's our man of the match from today's game with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. 